What's good, Internet? It is Tuesday, June 8th, and you are listening to Waypoint Radio, episode 401. We have entered a new age. I'm your host, Austin Walker. I'm joined by Patrick Klepik and Rob Zachney. What am, am I... Am I ready? The for age this of Waypoint Plus is upon us. Oh, we we launched last week. <laughs> what, else, we like, what else changed? Oh no, we didn't do we didn't do a <laughs> we didn't do a podcast after the launch. Really, like we talked about it on Twitch. That conversation's up on Twitch. That'll go up on uh, the Waypoint Plus feed once once we're probably past E three and stuff. Just to let Kato get back from vacation and and deal with all the E3 stuff and then you know we'll Kato's see. Kato's gonna have a lot to deal with once Kato yeah. time is over. Yeah, once Kato time is over, baby, we. Whew, we're jumping right into Kato, it. Kato, first. Kato time is going to turn into Kato's time. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, we, uh, we, yeah, we launched Waypoint Plus last week, waypointplus.com. We now have that e- uh, email, not email, that uh, uh, web address that you can go to. It's easy to remember, waypointplus.com. Uh, we already said this on Twitch the other day, but in case you missed that, which completely fair, um, the response has been extremely good. We we hit We hit the number. We hit the... Yeah, if, As, if, if, if you if you're a subscriber, listen to the after dark, and then towards the end there was uh, a mild call to action of like, you know, if we could if we could like smash that that number, it'd be it would make us all. If we could really smash good. that like button, that would be great. <laughs> uh, and and we y'all did. smash that motherfucking like button. Y'all even hit the little bell. You know what I'm saying on the YouTube? You know, like YouTubers are like, I think, like, it's, a, I think it's a carrot now. It's a carrot. Yeah. See what well, this is? You have to, you, you know. You have to go listen to that other podcast. Yeah, you gotta, why we said you that. Also, that was- I woke up Sunday morning and I was like, wait, carrot, like C A R E T. That's the thing. Yeah. What? Yeah. I went that entire conversation without like, because I've always just called it like informally a carrot because yeah. it looks like a little carrot, the, ju- the punctuation mark. And yeah. I was yeah. like, yeah, I you forgot just- that it actually is a carrot. Is that. Yeah. But it's uh-huh. a different. Yeah. That's a different spelling. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's very funny. <laughs> I love that you independently arrived at Rob Carrot making a transition to marketing. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so thanks again for everyone's support. Waypointplus.com to support us. Uh, and you know what? Let's use this early thing. I'm I'm going to shout out some friends who also are launching a thing this week. I know we shouldn't be competing with ourselves, but yesterday this is coming out on Tuesday, right? right? Yep. Yeah. It's Next has, has to for a, uh, yeah has to for an embargo. For two an embargo. Two embargoes. Two embargoes. Two embargo. Two embargo. A friend an embargo, embargo and, an, and, and a Sony embargo. Yes. <laughs> you know, do you do you like it or hate it when someone says friend DA? Uh, I like it. You like it. You like a friend DA. I think I'm past yes. it. You think I'm? You're not anti it, but you're like okay, it had its time. It has to. Or like I've we've known. Uh, each other long enough. You really need to reiterate this in front of me. Like I see. Let's go. But what if it's not okay? But what if it's on the other side of it, where it's someone you just kind of started to build a rapport that's with? F- that's fine. And then, then in, a, in a position where they're sharing something with me, you know, they need to you know get there however you're going to feel most comfortable. That's fine. What if it's not a video game thing at all, and it's just like <laughs> you know, keep this on that friend DA. I just started seeing someone new, <laughs> and it's going pretty good. But I don't want anyone else to know about it yet, just in case it falls apart. No, no, I, good. no Rob like is it. shaking his head. Yeah, okay. yeah, get out of here. <laughs> Don't take your video game uh, d- jargon <laughs> and start talking about your uh, new partner. Okay, well, what if it's still journalism, but it's but it's mm. not video games journalism, and it's something very serious? Like How serious? Right, n- like, new friend DA, uh, I got some news. Started that- saying Edward Snowden? What? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The NSA is up to some shit, but keep it on the friend DA, because that's just between you and me right now. We'll see how it develops. I'm just gonna you know? re- rename the the signal app on my phone to Friend DA. To Friend DA, yeah. Exactly. Look, Friend Friend DA. Uh, Daniel Ellsberg and I are uh, an item now. Uh, turns out we didn't know everything about what we Nixon didn't. was up to, but now no. we do. Now I now do. we're whew, I'm all the way I'm all the way right in on this. Uh, um, so yeah, thank you to to your support, and now I'd love it if you've paid some of that forward if you're interested in it to to the folks over at Nextlander. Uh, which is Vinny Caravella, Alex Navarro, Brad Shoemaker, old friends of ours. Uh, you saw Vinny on a stream last week. I, maybe maybe you missed this too. Uh, Rob Zachney, uh, Vinny Caravella, and I watched the 30-minute-long Skulls Showcase, which is a Warhammer showcase. And somehow we turned that into 90 minutes of content. 
Um, that was fun. Well, didn't you start really late? I, I saw frantic messages from Rob just being like, <sighs> I think this started already. We got the time wrong. We were going to we do a talk wrong. over and it was just an hour earlier than we thought. Uh, um, yeah. And honestly, Patrick, that might be on you because you were the one who like put that in the chat at that time. I think that I did that. I put that. Did I not okay, put that in the then chat? It's Austin. That's on me. I'll take the blame on that. I was All like, oh, yeah, 2 p.m. I may have done the thing of trying to translate it from British time and getting it off on that because it's a Games Workshop event. So that yeah. could be, that's on me. Yeah, you would think I would know how to do that after years of Friends at the Table having someone in, in England, but it is what Either it is. Either way, it all worked out. It's probably better for it. Um, yeah. That we could just like do it with the YouTube archive and, yeah. uh, you know, do it at our own pace. It was fun. It was a blast. So, uh, so, so shout outs to those folks. Um, uh, hopefully we'll see some, some of them. We'll, we'll do some, I'm going to go over there. Here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to go over there. Uh, later this week for something and hang out and with maybe, them. Maybe you can convince them to like that. I'll see cool. what I can do. Yeah. Like, so, like it'll be cool if they came. I'll put in a good word and say like, could we cross the streams? Ooh. Oh shit. What? <laughs> Is it late? Is it too late to do that? I just put my finger on what has been bothering me, bothering me about next lander. Okay. Outlander. The TV show or the, 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 the extremely trait. sexy TV show. Do you like about- that show? My mom. Hi, mom. My mom's been trying to get me to watch Outlander because she loves that. She loves Outlander. Her mom loves Outlander. My stepdad loves Outlander. It's very long and I'm bad at commitment. Generally, I tried speaking. to get into it. Okay. I think you're I, I think you're primed in some ways. I am. I think the thing that sort of put me off it was um, it might just be a little too interested in the romance side of things at the expense mm. of the political side of things is interested in both. Yeah. But like I'm a little bit more interested in like the the crown politics of like Scott like independent Scotland, Scotland. versus yeah, England. Yeah. Um and then the fact that they're kind of going to they kind of tie that off and then like we're going to the new world and having adventures there. And then of sure. course the last thing I saw was the main character uh being literally at the point of death uh and being jerked back to life. Um mm. like he gets he he gets like a um a, a hand job that like restarts his heart. Oh, you uh, meant he's jerked. Trying to play. You oh, meant, okay. Cause I was going to say, Rob, that's that. a very specific use. Like I feel like the audience is going to, uh, pull that quote out. And then you actually no, that's, that was, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Huh. No, like he's dying. He's, he's like, he's totally dead. And, uh, then he's like just one more time. <laughs> and so he is brought back to life with a handy. Is that what the Daft Punk song's about? <laughs> One more time. Yeah, that's it. That's what yeah. happens. Congrats to that guy, I guess. So Actually, it, congrats to whoever was pulling that off. That's who gets the congrats. That's a feat. Whoever Whoever's hands were involved in that situation. That's well, that's how saintly. powerful their sexual chemistry is. It's like alchemical. See. It's just I like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've heard of lead to gold, but have you heard of hand to heart? You know what I mean? It's like you've restarted it down there. The, whole, the heart has to, has to pump. That's good. Great. Well, <laughs> sorry, Austin's mom. I, you know, I, she can like the TV show she likes. I'm going to get around to it at some point. It's just a like six season long show or something at this point. Right. So five seasons long. So that's, you know, yeah, well, that's another one of the like Ronald D. Moore shows. Is, isn't he involved in that? Who's the, isn't there? No, the, I truly don't know. I don't know about. I feel like the creative team was at some point I thought about watching it and then. I watched the trailer. And then you're like, I'm good. It didn't, yeah. it didn't seem like my yeah. thing. It's yeah. I, there was t- too much of the romance and not enough of the, the other stuff. And I was like, that, God. that's good. Good for you. You know, seems like a good I'm, anyway, I'm, the listen, point is, it's very you funny. Like that, like, Lander, next yes. Lander could be for you. <laughs> next Lander could be for you. Pl- Different lots, vibe. Lots I of romance over there. Uh, <laughs> our, our good, oh, good no. friends. Beast cast is dying. <laughs> Maybe your up. hand could be the one <laughs> to bring it back. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Smash that subscribe Boo! button. <laughs> I'm I'm canceling my my gifted Waypoint Plus subscription just out of <laughs> yeah. Spite, that's all, yeah, so that you at home don't need to. <laughs> uh, we should talk about video games. I guess. I guess. I don't know. I feel like Rob's really left us in a Set place. Set the tone for different conversations. Ratchet and Clank, which are words I can't even hear now without thinking of them lewdly. Uh, Ooh, rift apart. A rift apart. Okay, but to be fair, those other Ratchet games did have horny names, right? That's like a recurring thing. Uh, or like, sort of, or like, I'm looking at the game tools, list. And tools of Destruction. Yeah, Tool, huh? Uh, Up Your Arsenal? Yes. 
They, back See? in the back in the PS2 days, there was a, a crack t- there was a bunch in time. Of those. Yeah, crack in time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Quest I mean, for booty. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. See, size matters. <laughs> Full frontal assault. These are all. This is all of them. I can't. I've forgotten. I guess I, I've like thrown those names Going out of commando? my head. <laughs> Only one of them is into the Nexus, and that makes me feel like I'm missing something. No, this I think that's, that's around the era. Like they, they've gotten away they were like, from all right, that. We gotta, a bit. we gotta chill on that for yeah, a second. Yeah, like they're. You know, I was, uh, I was, I was talking with someone. I was like thinking of trying to do an interview about. Like I had written a tweet that was: Is Ratchet and Clank like the longest running? kind of like action platformer series with a consistent mythology. Obviously there's like a Mega Man and Castlevanias that have right, like right, stories, sure. but like Ratchet's been going since the, you know, early PS2 era and deeply ca- like it has, it, you know, it's done retcons, you know, yada, yada, but it cares about like what is happening from each game to the next and then being connected and telling a larger story of, you know, Ratchet and his trying to find the Lombaxes. But um, mm-hmm. anyway, I, I was trying to think of, of writing a story about that and, uh, I pinged someone at Insomniac to ask him a couple questions about the original creative teams, and they were like, "Yeah, they don't really like to talk about some of the jokes that they made <laughs> to some of those earlier games." And I, I got the sense it was not from a like those jokes have aged necessarily like poorly and like reflects like the cultural norms, and more like, "Yeah, we made like a lot of like butt jokes in the title butt of jokes, our games, fart <laughs> jokes, and yeah, uh huh, yeah." It's like that style of. Of of sophomoric humor, they've moved past. I'm guessing. I don't know. You so, played yeah, this game. Yeah, I mean, it's you What's know. What's up it, with this game? It, yeah, so Ratchet and Clank, uh, uh, Rift Apart. Uh, I think it's just Rift Apart, not a uh, Rift Apart. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold this button. Yes, it's just Rift Apart. Um, yeah, it comes out uh, later this week uh, for or PlayStation Five only, as opposed to a number of other exclusive Sony yeah. games that are are available um, and will be available on. On, on both PS4 and PS5. Um, but yeah, this is the, I don't know which entry. Um, into you count the-, the PSP and Vita games? Do you know I, what I well, mean? Well, as, the- w- as what happened in my tweet asking about the mythology of these series, there were then like several Ratchet fans pointed out that, you know, oh, like the 2016 game, retcon certain things, the PSP Vita games are like seen as non-canon. But I mean, there's like, I don't know, pro- I would say like 20 there's, something. There's, uh, I think it's more like 14, 15. I'm looking 14, at the list 15? currently. All right. So if that's if you count the the sure side ones, you know. Uh, but yeah, it's, yeah, a, you it's know, a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, and it's a character, you know, character action game. You know, I, I, you can describe it as a platformer. There is a fair amount of platforming, but I would say the the shooting is predominantly the thing that you are doing in these games more than anything else. Um, you know, filtered in with some platforming and sort of things. But yeah, it's sort of a PS2 like very like kind of straightforward character action game replay ratchet um you know this uh it's a uh, his uh race of the lombaxes he's the last one and kind of his whole deal is that he where did they go why is he the last one and so like that's his uh, like emotional hang up throughout the entire uh like arc of this series episode series, 50 yeah, yeah, i mean okay. well yeah because i mean really i really didn't realize like, he was still the only one i didn't know that that was still the thing well a, a lombax is like a is like a rodent like a yeah, they furry. look kind of like mouse, yeah, furry mouse like. They, they like you know they they are uh like sort of like an ancient race like that you know I don't think it's quite like the uh what's the ones in Mass Effect that leave behind all their stuff the not, not the Protheans maybe yeah, the Protheans it's yeah, the Protheans, Protheans. yeah I think so yeah, so yeah like there's not the Lombaxes aren't like Protheans they're not like a ancient precursor species I don't think species. so I don't think so I, I didn't play the PS2 one so I'm like I'm I'm losing a, a bit of foundational sure, knowledge on those sure. I jumped in on the the PS3 one but. Yeah, like they're like highly technologically advanced, like um, uh, a group, and like he's the only one left, and like that kind of drives his his, his emotions um, through through a number of the games, and he's you know teamed up with Clank, this little robot that he strapped on his back, um, you know that kind of like uh, widens Ratchet's ability set, you know he turns into a helicopter so he can float down, um, mm-hmm. and these games over time have uh, become like much more RPGified. Like I jumped in on the PS three games and like the real hook I had other than being like pretty decent uh, character action games, which are kind of my bread and butter. Like I love, you know, Mario, Crash Bandicoot, Spyro. Like I, I just like a lot of those style of games and Ratchet had this like really satisfying mix of, oh, like what if that, but with a gun, but in a way that still felt like fun and right, like Saturday right. morning, morning cartoony and not, uh, I don't know. Did you watch the trailer this weekend? I, I say I have Twitter on the weekend, but do you see the Pokemon with guns? trailer that I was did. going around i did i i had a weird arc with it's called pa- pal world sure i had a very weird arc with that trailer which is i did i had the response i had the response that everyone had which is like, which is like <clears throat> what the fuck is going on <laughs> um 
And then I did it's it's stupid. It's like I'm just too fucking online. I had that response the morning before the afternoon where everyone found it. So I went through an entire emotional arc of sharing it with friends and talking about it and coming to peace with it, you know, and being <laughs> like, okay, this is the same developers Craftopia. Cra- the Craftopia devs released that, that trailer a year ago where they had the big conveyor belts with like giraffes and elephants falling into a big pot of stew. This is their bit. They want you to talk about it in, in this right. way. Because and also, but also, I think it's kind of funny because this is tr- this is Pokemon. This is already Pokemon. It's, it's, it's a just, truer version of Pokemon. It's Pokemon being true yeah, to it's itself. It's a more honest version of Pokemon. People who don't know, there was a trailer for a game that went up that starts with like you think it's a cutesy like 3D Pokemon game, you know, style game, and, and it is. And you're making farms and you're farming with your Pokemon and you're doing chores with Pokemon. Uh, sorry, they're called pals. And then halfway through. You are gunning people down with your Pokemon hovering above you, also holding an AK. You are capturing Pokemon by the net load, uh, and then the and then taking them to a factory to build you new AK forty seven. Yeah, there's just labor camps in. in uh, there's a rocket launcher sequence where a huge building blows up, and like I think it's a. I'm. I've seen people be like. This tra- this is this game is is this is everything that PETA worries Pokemon is. And I'm saying this is what Pokemon is. Your eyes just are you're letting your eyes deceive you. This is the truth of the Pokemon world already. L- live it and love it, baby. Um but by the time everyone was talking about it, I was like, oh my god, can we talk about anything else? Oh, so yeah, so, I, I saw like a Sunday evening sitting down and like totally I don't know, through my timeline not- and it was it was delightful. It's 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 a stupid like I said it's because I'm always I'm online too much mm-hmm. that sometimes I'll see the first way I mean, the thing that happens is like thirty people like did you see this and it's like yeah I, I saw it I saw it I saw it and that's not on them they don't know that I saw it I need to just be they don't know how cursed it. you are they don't know how cursed I am but yeah I saw this because I wasn't asleep and it was six a.m. and it went, <laughs> when it went up I saw it immediately what are you talking about if you can't um, go to sleep you'll see you see everything you see everything that's where my eyes are always open. <laughs> Anyway, why does this have to do? Oh, in other words, the shooting in this is not as no, like, but I know it, it was it cursed was like, as that. Yeah, it's, this well, is still a cartoony in a way that's like yeah, and it, it, like you know, the, I think part of the appeal of the series was that, you know it found a way to weave those worlds together in a way that you know the, the the signature bit of Ratchet and Clank as a series has been. Oh, what do the wacky weapons do? And they have your base types of. A pistol and a shotgun and and in some, at least in this one, I don't remember all the weapons of all the games. Like there is a sniper rifle you get at some point, but you're always fighting like cute robots and like, you know, weird little creatures. And it finds a way to have this extravagant Saturday morning cartoon violence in, in a way that is like really entertaining and funny and like, has had me like completely hooked like since the the PS3 one that I that I jumped onto. And I guess they put out the 2016 uh, game, which was a uh, a remake of the first one, but with a like un- unreliable narrator so they could like kind of like change parts of the the story and keep it fresh for um mm-hmm. for for long time fans. And also the like the real, you know, pitch on these games is what happens is you end up so you can assign four weapons to like, you know, your D-pad like oh these are my main ones. But like really the appeal is holding the triangle button down and having access to 25 weapons at right. once over the course of the game and right. ha- d- just deploying all of them, not all of them simultaneously but in like re- so like at certain points like three fourths of the game uh, you get these like very useful kind of like countermeasure weapons. Like so, for example, I can uh, throw down five robots that go and autonomously fight for me. But also, uh-huh. I can shoot into the sky like a drone that is like shooting bullets down at characters. While at the same time, I can uh, throw a set of uh, fungi on the ground that. Uh, like crack jokes while also like running around the map and like shooting things while also at the same time I have thrown down a uh, a plant that spins around and like covers the enemies in vines temporarily restraining them from attacking and then I pull out you know my uh, lightning gun right, that uh, right. because they're now like frozen in place beating up all these enemies getting pelted and I hit them with the lightning gun and it chains between you know seven enemies at once and they all explode in a beautiful uh uh you know, colorful explosion. Like that's, that's really like the joy of Ratchet and Clank as you're like progressing through its base level, like, you know, go from level to level acquiring um, weapons. And also along the way, those weapons have RPG, you know, upgrade systems. Like it's very basic. Um, You are, the more you use them, the more experience you get, the more they level up, the more that they unlock upgrade tiers uh, in like this shop. But it's just like watching all of these different little weird ideas play around right. with one another and interact. Um, and, you know, that's me only, you know, chaining together 
you know, four or five of them, you know, at times when you're dealing with, you know, 20 to 30 enemies at once, you know, you just be like, oh, I shot a rocket launcher. Oh, I shot a shot. You know, it's like that's the joy of like switching between all these weird right. ones. And it's, the, it's Doom, but Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah, you know, which yeah. Bouncing and, between weapons and yeah. And, and because they have the, 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 the upgrade hook, like what I always uh, enjoy is I, I fill that thing out to level five, which is the max max cap other than doing the sort of like upgrade tiers where you're using your uh, – at raritarium, you know, is their bullshit, you know, sure. uh, uh-huh. a thing that you collect to, to upgrade the, the nodes. Um, but what I like doing is I, I max it up to five and then I'm done. You are no longer in my arsenal because oh. I just love getting it to level five. Right. And right. right. So what's so much and fun. And the joy of like flipping between new, trying out a new weapon right. at that point. Right. right? Like, I, yeah. you know, I, oh, yeah. I haven't tried this ricochet weapon where uh, you like hold left trigger that lines it up on an enemy. And if you get that first shot off, you hold the reticle on them and the bullet just keeps hitting them over and over <laughs> again with increasing um, power. It's like, well, That's I didn't really funny. use that before. Mostly because it's a fairly useless weapon. Like it's one of the few I don't have upgraded to level five because I just never found a use case other than I ran out of ammo of of other en- sure. other weapons. Like I guess I'll use ricochet for for a little bit. But I just liked that I would basically like just slotting over to a new set of weapons. Those become my primaries, and they, it just introduces a totally different dynamic for how the combat scenarios play out. So that's kind right. of like the, the the baseline. What I found attractive and really fun about this series, and then Rift Apart. The the big thing um, here is. You know, they've made this pitch that, oh, like the really fast SSDs on these machines are going to let us, if you've seen any of the trailers, or the artwork, you know, or the title Rift Apart, it's like, oh, there are these rifts and you're going to be able to jump between worlds simultaneously. That's because the the setup for this one is, you know, there's, you know, much like a Saturday morning cartoon, there is a consistent singular villain. Like Dr. Nefarious is this, you know, robotic evil dude that you just fight over and I mean, over. You're going to call, you're going to call someone nefarious. What are you going to, what do you expect? Exactly. You know like, what I just, mean? Like, you know, they're going to turn out to be kind of a bad guy <laughs> if you call him nefarious day in day I don't know if nefari- nefarious is that an origin story. I haven't paid that close attention to the. Almost certainly though, right? Yeah. Uh, and, um, We'll get a spinoff at some point, I suppose. The end of um, the recent Ratchet and Clank mobile game, it turns out that you're Dr. Nefarious. <laughs> Yeah, well, we actually, what the series needs is we need to get a little Nomura. Um, he yeah, just needs to that's what we need. quit Square and then just start consulting. To just do a mythology consulting service. Um, just like, I will come in and add <laughs> well, ten you layers can't do of that complexity. Because I know game. that there's a playable woman in this game. So yeah, well, I, I, uh, I might be getting this wrong, but I believe one of the issues people had with the 2016 version was they basically like retconned out like the one woman they had introduced into the oh Ratchet series. Like, oh, actually, also, no. don't send me your emails. I know about Aqua. I know you can play as Kyrie briefly in some sequences. I just think he's never done justice. That's all. Anyway, Correct. continue. Correct. Well, and I think, you know, to some degree, I think the Ratchet and Clank series, d- despite not maybe having the same scrutiny on its yes, characters in the same way, similarly, uh, yeah. uh, because of the way they treated one of the characters in, in 2016, um, there has been a little bit of annoyance. Uh, and so, anyway, so in this one, uh, Doctor Nefarious like gets a handle on this thing called the Dimensionator, which opens up, you know, rifts to, to other worlds. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, what it also opens up is a rift to another world where there are sort of like a, the mirror opposites, uh, or, or kind of like equal characters to Ratchet and Clank, and that's okay, Rivet sure. and I forget the the little uh, robots uh, name that's the the equivalent. But you know, you get and and Rivet is again in her she world. She has a Clank of her own. Basically. Yeah, yes, has a clank, has a clank of her own, <laughs> a, you know, a clank of her own. Clank of her That's own. That's my, my my new soap opera that I'm uh, starting yeah, on the yeah, CW. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and and uh, you know she's the she, she's the only Lombax in in her world. Um, and you know she wants to find the Lombaxes too. And so you end up teaming up with finding and eventually teaming up with these uh, two characters, and you kind of swap between them based on the different worlds that you're going to. They have the exact same move set, same weapons. They just sort of like gloss over, uh, hey, you've gotten some upgrade boots for Ratchet. And like Ratchet, you know, Rivet just gets them. Like, don't worry about it. Like, don't think about it too much. And um, so you kind of swap between the two um, for narrative reasons as you're kind of like jumping between these different levels um, that you kind of navigate between your ship. Um, anyway, that's all to say this opens up as you've seen in the trailers, like, oh, look, like these, ca- you know, uh, Ratchet and Rivet can hit a button and they can jump between worlds. And I, I, yeah. I well, up front, I mean, high level. I, I loved this game. I think it's a really excellent yeah. Ratchet uh-huh. Clank game. Um, but it's, and it's it's very pretty. All the footage I've seen looks very pretty. It's gorgeous. So, gorgeous. Just generally speaking. Generally before speaking. We get it, 
to yeah. the specific I, yeah, thing I, that yeah, I've always been skeptical of. I'm just going to say, but go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like it's, it's, it's really good. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great game to jump into. If it's your first time with the ratchet and clank game, uh, if you've played a if bunch you bought of a PS five last year and you were like, or, th- or if you found a PS five somehow this year and we're like, I want to play something. Uh, on it's, it it's, yeah. It's a great, great, you know, 4k showcase, all that, all that. Yeah. And, and I'll get it back into the things I like about it. But you know, I was super curious to see, like, well, what is this? You know, the way they were pitching it was like, oh, like, in, uh, you know, you'll be jumping between worlds. And in combat, you'll be, I don't know, jumping between worlds. And, like, that's going to change, like, what happens moment to moment. And, like, the reality is, is no. Like, they, there's, like, very little of this in the game. Like, really, what they added was, like, a grapple hook. And it's a, it's a, it's a dimension. Now, does it, now, does it huh. actually teleport you physically to a different part yeah, of the map. It does yes. it. It does oh, but it. It does But the it's thing. not, it's not, I'm standing in a, okay, so they, they've shown this, they've shown this off a few times now through the, the Sony events right. over the last year. The first time that they showed it was when I was most skeptical of it. Uh, it was, it was like 10 months ago, something like that, because the way that they showed it was a big set piece event where you're like going through a linear space in and out of portals, going between different versions of rifts, going between different versions of a city, kind of in a um, in like a big chase sequence style thing where you're like flipping between the two things. But that didn't seem like there was much in the way of agency game. on the player. Right. right so that they- was basically like the wallpaper is changing around me right. as I go from rift to rift. Right. But then I, I thought I thought that I'd seen some sections where it was also like you're in a big you know, town square in this cyber world or whatever. And then you go through a rift and you're still in that place, but the enemies are different or something. Does that so not there happen is, so there very is. often? So there, there, okay. is, there is like, there's like, there's one, there, there's one world and it's a really memorable one where there are these crystals uh, strewn about and you hit those and mm-hmm. it, you know, it, uh, you know, basically in no time at all, like shifts you to another area. Like there, there mm-hmm. is that. And it is, it is neat. That it happens really fast, and then after like the third time you do it, you know you're just not really noticing yeah. that it's a thing. And I, guess, and I guess it's all to say they they I think they hung this sort of like gimmick um, as a use of the SSD um, on trying to sell people like both the hardware and this yeah. new thing they're doing. And it's fu- it's fine. I'm like also like not trying to like. It is wholly- probably using the SSD in that yeah. way. Yeah. Oh, it's it, just I mean, like- again like is it like it, it like I am t- like you know tethering or like grapple hooking yeah. across the area and. I, you know, I watch the character go through the portal, like end up there. But like, practically speaking, is it all that different from just a grapple hook being there and the character just shooting across? You know what I mean? Like, because like enemies are still there. You're not using. It's not um that. It's not uh. Ooh, why am I blanking on the name of either the Dishonored two level or the Titanfall two level with the with oh, the effect and cause and effect and um, cause the, and it's it's oh God, the, the est- is it the Doctor. What is it's it? Not called? the Clockwork Mansion. It's, it's not the Clockwork Mansion. It's the it's, other one. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. The, the those two levels in which the circumstances are distinct between the two dimensions that you're kind of flopping between. And, and there is that one periods. where you're hitting the crystals, and that that is true. Right. right. You are going through two different. You're going through okay. two do different eras. And you're using of, that to solve puzzles or yes, to navigate yes. in different ways. Okay, so they do do it at least once. But yeah. That's no, not what the whole game is. No, that's it's not. not what, yeah, like much more of the game is like very traditional. Uh, sort of Ratchet and Clank, like a very pretty, very fun, very good version mm-hmm. of that in which I think like what is much more fundamentally different, but it's, it's like I understand why it's not as big of like the sell on on like here's what's you know cool and unique about this one is like when we talk about and I brought this up before, like, you know, when we like the oh, the generic term open world, right? Like, yeah, it really just means like a big map. And then what do you do inside it? And right. there are there's one area, one level in particular where they drop you in to just like the biggest map you've ever been on a Ratchet and Clank game, where as you start walking around, it's like, this doesn't, I don't, I hope I don't have to walk this yeah. map. That would not be uh, very satisfying. And of course they know that like that. And then immediately right, right. you get these rocket boots that like have this very satisfying. If you hit like left trigger, right trigger, like the boots like start to turn on into a turbo mode. And so you get into this rhythm of like hitting those back and forth and then boom, like, Ratchet or nice. Rivet, like, just boosts off um, so that you have, like, this turbo speed. And there are, like, these, uh, like, uh, turbo, like, kind of, like, uh, extra, uh, like, a uh, rate, like, launch points you can hit that will, like, send you into even, like, a faster speed that you can hit ramps that, like, send you, like, way cool. off into yeah. the sky. And you can hit these. And it's it's this big open space that I 
I spent like two or three hours exploring where I it, it both had and also like in some ways reminded me of like our, like our Elden Ring conversations of like how do games take advantage of like larger maps while retaining right. a lot right. of what you like about the original design and like this was an in- instance where they did the, did this perfectly where I there were right. I had this big map to explore where there were lots of cool puzzles that took advantage of the fact that it was a giant map and I had to be looking very carefully at the geometry and how do I get around mm-hmm. to this. Um, but but also like they were like oh when you come over to this cave and then we've got like a traditional ratchet and clank level where we've got these like these combat encounters that are like very right. carefully like scripted and set cool. up yeah. um and I I don't know if like a whole game maybe there's a reason they didn't do like an entire game of that um maybe it would have kind of worn out its welcome but it was like a really uh, a really wonderful like one off where I was meant to sit down for 20 minutes to wait for my kids laundry to be finished. And I was going to go watch a TV show and I ended up like, spending two or three hours like finishing out that section because it was it was right. that much fun. And I think they do a really good job in this game in general. And part of what the, the tethers work to aid is just an enormous amount of mobility for the character. So even though I I will reduce the tethers to more or less a grappling hook. It is still really fun. It's still a fun to have traversal oh, thing. Yeah, it's super yeah, cool to yeah. be in the middle of a combat sequence where you know. Imagine what I was talking about setting up, where I was you know setting down like three different weapons that are kind of doing their own right. thing. Then I look at the rift off to my right, tap L one, shoot up there, and then all of a sudden right. I'm on the other side of the map watching that play out. Pull out my rocket launcher and just like boom, boom, boom. You know, like hit them from a distance. Those come over with you in the rift if you shoot something in in place one. No, it all rift. stays there. But what I mean is like okay. I'm now positioned in a different spot where I'm. No, like, sorry. What I mean is even though you went through a rift to another dimension, mm-hmm. your weapons are also already in that other dimension. Well, in this case, again, like it, it, in mo- in, it's literally just a grappling hook in this level. Then. In, in mo in most cases, gotcha. the rifts are okay. you just going to a different part of the existing level of the existing level. I was reading. I thought you were saying. It's. I thought the wallpaper was still changing in those scenarios. No, no. But that. Oh, okay. Gotcha. gotcha. And, and again, occasionally it does happen, but the vast majority yeah, yeah, of the yeah. time you're going to be interacting with it is just. Okay. It gets you get over you. to a, a you know a different vantage point. Like oh right, there's no way for me to jump up to this area. How do I get totally. there? Like I, I and like I in a battle right arena, that's a, still a very fun. Oh, way it's of yeah, it's, it's, re- it's really that's, fun. You didn't get that far into Returnal, right? You didn't get to the grappling hook in Returnal because no, that was like, that's the end of area two. Yeah, and that like completely changed the way the combat feels in that game yeah, for the same reason. I, yeah, I'm, I'm like, really, oh my god, I can't wait to like zip up. I can zip up there if I'm getting cornered by these flying enemies. That stuff feels so good. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah and that, that makes sense to me. And I and I highly recommend people uh, if you've played these games before, if you like these types of games, like bump up the difficulty to the like slightly above like the mm-hmm. the one recommended. It, uh, it I still rarely ever died, but it adds just enough spice to the combat that. I'd be running out of ammo of my my preferred weapons, right, even in situations right. where I was was you know trying to use different ones. It just it made it made it it's really enjoyable on a higher difficulty without actually being altogether that punitive. Yeah. It mostly just means I needed to. There's also a dash, right? So you have like all these different. Once you get the boots and you've got mm-hmm. the dash and you got these tethers, you suddenly have like six you know five six different things that. Uh, Ratchet or Rivet can be doing that has nothing to do with the you know giant you know uh, plethora of of weapon options in front of you and like that's the right. the real fun is like oh they've given you all these different movement abilities that allow you to try and set up different things that aren't just like cycling through the weapon wheel and like spamming you know the the you know the the sixth weapon that will like bounce between you know a bunch totally. of enemies at once to to take them out. Um, totally. so I definitely, rec- I, I, I really enjoyed playing it on the, on the higher difficulty. And if you find out what I ended up doing was, uh, I haven't seen like a full review of the accessibility options, but like Insomniac does take that stuff really seriously. And this game has like a ton of new stuff in, 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 in that direction. Um, and I, you know, I'd point people to, you know, the appropriate places to, to see exactly how that <laughs> works. Cause a lot of stuff is not like there for me to take advantage of, but you know, extensions of that are like the fact that this game has like real time, you know, difficulty changes where I can do it and it doesn't send me back to a checkpoint. Like I can just switch it in the middle of a fight. The game changes the parameters to the point yeah. where there are these combat arenas where a couple of them were just, they got, they were too, a little too spicy. It was like, all right, like this is not what I'm here for. I just want the <laughs> drop that the game is going to give me from this. Um, and I would change the difficulty like right in the middle of the combat encounter. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden like health started popping. Cause one of the big modifiers between the harder difficulty and the normal difficulty was like, we're just not going to give you, you know, health boosts like throughout the combat encounter. And so like that was, 
that kind of that stuff is is really nice. Sure, so, sure. Um, yeah, it's cool. it's, well, it's yeah, it's it's really good. I highly recommend it. Um, the, the, I guess the other thing I would I point out is that when I the like twenty or you know fifteen twenty hours that I played um, was in like the default. Uh, I guess it would be like a quality mode, um, you know, it, where it was uh, like 4K ray tracing on 30 FPS. Um, and I did have a moment where like the opening, like the opening to the game, which is like, again, like a big chase sequence where tons of things are happening around you. And I was like, I, I was like, oh, no, like the performance modes have broken me. Like I see the frames like this. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with it's a solid 30. It's locked. Uh-huh. It's 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 great. But. I'm sitting there going, ah, like I can see it. Did these games break me? And it was a little bit of a bummer because I like the fact that I have historically not had a yes, huge not issue care too much, with, yeah. with variable frame rates. And, uh, and and I can't, I couldn't even, this game does have a performance mode. I should be clear. It, it will have one when you play it, but yeah. there were big red warning signs. Please don't play the performance uh, mode. It's not done. Um, it will break your save and then you'll just have to delete your save and start over. Um, and I will say an hour into the game was just fine. Like, and right, right, right. I, similarly to where I played um, Miles Morales in the like the qual- like quality mode or whatever they whatever mm-hmm. like the, the the default. Um, and I found that game to be like beautiful and, and gorgeous and just fine at, at 30 FPS because they didn't add a bunch of the 60 FPS stuff until later. Um, right, right. And the performance patch did get put in uh, this morning or yesterday. I, I played with it a little bit before we we jumped in here. And yeah, it looks fucking awesome at at 60 and i probably would have played they had this one even goes uh you know now developers are even putting more like more nuanced versions of these it's performance like P- modes it's almost like peace we're getting towards we're getting, not so PC, like c but like a few check boxes right i feel like we're a year late from an advanced settings menu that yeah, is just gonna let you uh-huh. start picking those and i really think they should just do just that do it. just put it in, under a sub menu and like let people yeah play around with what they want but but like for example in this and this has been in a couple other games you have like the the quality mode which is like a 4k ray tracing like all the effects turned up to the max 30 yeah. fps then there's a performance mode but there's performance with or without ray tracing um so it's like you had like hey you get 60 fps with ray tracing and it's like you know then one without that like i forget what it, it changed maybe the resolution is a little higher right, as, a, as right, a result right. um but it's all moving in that direction and the performance performance mode yeah. is is really nice, but I also found the quality mode to be just fine. And I did note, you know, it, you know, in the same way, I, I noticed the frame rate lacking in the the quality mode, but then immediately noticed the resolution drop in in the performance in, mode. But it's like right, anything else; sure. you play it for an hour, and uh, you'll be yeah. you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, and the one last thing I would say is, as someone that uh, is tries to be an an obsessive up to the point of being annoyed to collect things in games. Yeah. Um, this game does a really fantastic job of streamlining the collecting experience where um, <clears throat> when you, there's a, a map, a mini map you can pull up, which I don't know if it's been in maps have been in previous games or at least ones as detailed as these, but to find the different things on the map uh, when you put like a, a waypoint on it, Sometimes a waypoint is just like what wh- the general direction it is in um, and in and, and Rift Apart, <clears throat> it's positional. So you'll know exactly like, is it above you? Is it below okay, you? Sure. And it's like just really, like really useful for trying to like clean up the, the areas. And then about three fourths of the game, you get an upgrade that um, uh, previously items only got put onto the map through proximity. So it's like if you were near a secret, hey, even if you haven't found it right, or even know it's sure. here, you're close enough that we're going to park it on the map. Um, but then when you've like found 80% of the stuff, you're not really sure where to look on the map anymore. And again, smartly, and probably cause they've been making these games for a long time. They're like, all right, like we're just going to give you an upgrade that marks everything on your map. So you can go and, and clean, Get clean all rest, that up. Yeah. And so I think I have the game sitting at 97% and I'm going to go oh, clean up that, that 3%, um, uh, before I, I kind of close the books on it. Close but, the, yeah. Do you, yeah. Wait, so have you already beaten it, beaten it? Or are you like right before the point of no return? I, yeah, I've, no, I, yeah, I've, there is a point of no return. And okay. then it doesn't, I, I wish, you, I wish you, more yeah. games made clear. You can come back to this point after. Right, um, right. Because that is sort of the, like, I would say fairly close to the default at this point where games will like, hey, you want to go see the story finish up and then you can come back and. Breath of the Wild does it that way. A lot of games do it that way. Yeah. Some games don't. Miles Morales didn't, right? Miles Morales has a post game. I mean, it does let you go back into the world, but there is Correct. explicitly a fun post game. The situation has changed. There's some extra. Right. But you can still go do all quests. the, all the, all the yes, old stuff. Yes, and I did that yes. in, in that game. And, and, um, yeah, same. But whereas this one, like the end of the game, like changes the dynamics of the world to the point where you couldn't right. do those sure, things sure. anymore. 
Yeah. So you finish it, and then the game's like, hey, do you want to start New Game Plus? Do you want to go back and finish up your old game? And even in, when you do that, uh, if you go back to the main, the start screen, it's like, hey, you don't have to, like, do the ending again. Like, just oh, hit, interesting. Just okay. hit square here, and you can start the New Game Plus now that you've cleared out all the all the nice. stuff in, in the original mode. So, yeah, that's that's... And also, I'm glad to finish this because I've wanted to get back to Returnal. I've given up on the fact that yeah. they're not going to like re- significantly rebalance that game until probably not it gets its time. Yeah, my yeah. guess is a, I my guess is big changes are coming, and that will be with like the big. It'll be like whatever I, the big expansion. There'll or be a there'll DLC. be a save update, and then there'll be yeah. a, a DLC update with new areas. But um, I wanted to get back to that, and um, I'm glad to have this off my plate so I can get back to return. Yeah. This, is a, this is a really good game. I think people are going to be like, this game's going to blow up and people are going to be really happy with it because I was, I, I definitely was cool. Yeah. I, there I've, I've seen some other buzz from other critics, um, uh, really just having a blast with it. So it, I, it's a thing where it's like, you know what? I'll give it a shot. I'm not historically a ratchet and clank person. I'm not historically one of these as a person. A char- yeah. You know these kind I mean? of character action games, like the ones. Yeah. That are, or like, like the platformy. Yeah. The mascot games. Right. I, like, yep. I fell off of those when we when we when we went to, you know, 3D, when we went to the, the PS1 and N64. Like I, I played Mario 64 and had an OK time, but I was not I was not the Mario 64 guy. And then from there. I did. I didn't pick a fight in the in the Jack and Daxter Ratchet and Clank Wars. Um, <laughs> See, that's where I, I fe- that's where I fell off in the in the PS2 era. Totally. Um, yes, I, yeah. I was you know I, again like I played a lot of Spyro Crash. Like so, yeah, know, okay, even I Gex. By then. I played the Crash Gecko. One, and then I was like, oh wow, really? Okay, so you were still on. Well, because that platforming is like the genre that's for the me, thing. and yeah, so yeah. like you sense. know, I, I in and actually it's funny because in the PS2 era, I don't know why I didn't play Ratchet and Clank. But I just like picked the lane, which was Sly Cooper. Like that was the mascot that was series yours, that I got sure. into, and just didn't play well, Ratchet. I played Sly the Cooper's first. Clearly, a better furry than <laughs> Sly Cooper is a cool raccoon guy who's like doing. Heist. He was a cool raccoon guy. I like. I I think that I I really did as a when I in that era I was like I should get in the Sly Cooper games. These games seem fun. They were I never they got were around to good. it, but yeah, yeah. Um, I also should have played those Jack games because I like I was really I was really enamored with the idea of that second Jack game having a big open world area and having vehicles and stuff. And I just like never I don't know. I thought I never got around to it. I was I was a kid. I was young. I was, you know, in college when those games were coming out right. and did not have money for many games. And I was sticking to things I knew I would like. Basically. Was two was two when they like made the Armored jump to post apocalypse or was that three? I want to say that was Jack. Maybe Jack three was the one where they that- went Mad Max. Uh, you know what? I don't. I don't know the series well enough to give you an answer. People are screaming at their. At and their I, you know what? I, I want right to. Uh, it's probably for the best. Three that, was post-apocalypse. Okay, it's I'm probably for the best that yeah. Naughty Dog never made it. But I'm sure you've seen that artwork yes, where they I've seen the, thought about like reinventing Jack and yes. Daxter as like realistic real people or real creatures. I've seen mm, that. I want to. I want to jump into it. the rift where they made that game. <laughs> <laughs> Just see what that world is like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. God. Um. All right, we should take a break. We can come back and then we can talk about a game where you have a lot of lots of weapons that you upgrade uh, over time. You have lots of mobility options like a grappling hook and dashes, and uh, it's also weird because it's like there's a, a dimensional portal opened up, and oh. there's like there's like other versions that are like I'm the only one that got a weirder. code for Ratchet. What do we? Well, yeah, we could. Who could say? Hmm. We'll be right back. Necromunda, <laughs> hired gun by Stramon Studios. Str- stream. Sh- I know. No, I do not know. Stramon. Stramon. S T R E U M space O N. Is that spelled right, Rob? No, I thought it was Stram, like one word. Stram. Yeah, S T R E U M. Yeah. Right? Is that not right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then a space, and then yeah. on studio. Yeah, and so I always sort of figured, like, in my head, it's always been, like, uh, stream on. Right, like, yeah. game on, but stream on. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. They, so if you don't know stream on studio, uh, or I, I, mm, I wish I knew. I should have looked up how to pronounce the name of this, this company. Um, I first learned about them. They're a French company. I first, I first, uh, the first game of theirs that I played was I Divine Cybermancy, which I adore, uh, unironically. I did not like. I adore it unironically. Um, I think it was. Just, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. But you, the only way you can appreciate it is as like a fun experiment, not like as a. Yeah, it's a bizarre, like, 
Yeah, it feels like it, fa- it feels like playing a mood board with really advanced mechanics. That's but the entire very, thing isn't really built. I think it is a, a very ambitious. Uh, it's it's my bio mutant, right? It's like they put every mechanic they could think of into that game. Didn't, didn't Vinny really like that game? Probably. That sounds like a Vinny yeah. game to me. Um, it's it's you know it, it similarly like Ratchet and Clank has one level that's basically a big open world level mm-hmm. for some reason. Um, uh, and then lots of other linear things. It has its own very, you know, born out of a a tabletop RPG home campaign, taking influences from 40k and uh, Blade Runner and Ghost in the Shell and the 47 know, Ronin. The, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. Yes, a hundred percent. What if the what if the 47 Ronin were cyber samurai? Yeah, and also they were tied into a intergalactic cross-dimensional war anyway people should check out i cyber divine cyber hmm, i divine cybermancy uh if it's on sale or something this game feels like that i guess after that they played or they made space hulk deathwing a game i liked much less in which they were doing a 40k game where you were doing the kind of space hulk room clearing of 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 the of the space hulk board game basically rob the spirit of skulls was upon me this weekend by the way oh, yeah? i bought i was like you know fuck it i'm gonna get into death wing but i didn't get a chance to play it this it's weekend. it's oh i didn't love it i i just can't believe yeah that you could like that there would not be a great game about like going into the space hulk and like getting fucked up by tyranids yeah. with your terminator squad like i refuse to believe you could fuck that up and I, I, fuck it up is strong, right? I think it's. I think that it's like fundamentally a fine game. I just don't think that it was a especially especially fun game. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I think yeah. if I cared more about about Space Marines specifically, I probably would have had a better time with it. Um, uh, but I, I also just think it was like it primarily works in one mode. It primarily works in this like. Deathwing primarily works in the, the kind of like you walk into a room and then the hordes of enemies rush at you. Or at least what I played of it was that over yeah. and over again. Like it just didn't really do it for me. I quite like Necromunda Hired Gun. Um, I, it is you know it has its bugs. It has some bugs. It's it's the performance isn't ideal. They just they did just I had a patch. To, I had to bounce off the Xbox copy and go. Really, to the damn that bad. There is. It- the sensitivity on the sticks is just fucking busted on Xbox. Like you can't Fuck. like there's such a dead zone. Uh and maybe I could have fucked with it to to fix this, but like I could not do fine point aiming down sights uh because like by the time it registered the move, it would throw the sight way off. And I was like and the thing is this is so clearly a P- a PC ass shooter. Yep. Where it's, it's a mouse like, and keyboard game for real for real. It's it, what caught me off guard is I did not expect it to be so much like uh, the new Doom game. Yeah, totally. In some ways. Totally. I think I Divine Cybermancy is like a tribute band to um, like immersive Sims in some ways. And right. yes, yes. This you're is totally also, right. There's still a lot going on in this game, <laughs> but it's also like all in the service of run and gun. Yes. Uh, down to the way you use. I don't know how, how many levels into, into it are you at this point? Just a couple, and then I restart. Okay, okay, right, right, right. So I'm back. I'm oh, back to the hub area. I, I'd really hope you were going to get to the third level. The third level of this game is where I was like, "Yo, this is this is sick." Um, the way you use your cyber abilities. So it's a first person shooter. Um, it's, it takes place on for people who don't know anything about 40k to like set this up a little bit. Um, in the world of 40k, there's a huge space empire, um, uh, the Imperium of Man, that has spread across the galaxy. It is fighting the forces of chaos, which it helped unleash in many ways. Um, chaos is an otherworldly realm of desire and wickedness, and d- draws on on you know human will. Um, uh, uh, there are a bunch of other alien species out there uh, that that are inspired by things like the aliens from Aliens, but also include sick shit like space pyramid zombie guys and you know robot communists with mechs. I'll let you get one guess into what my faction is. Um, uh, this game takes place on a hive world, which is uh, the biggest hive world, Necromunda. A hive world is not a space bug place. It is one of the many factory and foundry worlds of the Imperium, of the Great Empire, uh, in which their weapons of war are made. Uh, these worlds are your underbelly of Coruscant. These are your underground cyberpunk 
post-apocalyptic blend of people who are down and out and trying to make a fucking buck, trying to get to the next day alive. Um, you play as a bounty hunter in this world, and the basic structure of the game is that it's level-based, but there are also kind of proc gen and it's proc gen is strong. There are challenges that you can kind of do in the in sections of the main levels that you do. You can return to those levels to do something like go free five psychers, which are like a type of psychic, uh, or go kill th- three gang bosses. Um, and that's a way to get extra income to, to level up your character. <laughs> There's a lot in terms of the progression in this game, right? You're leveling up. One, you're getting experience points that just go into your experience bucket and give you flat bonuses i think when you level up two you can spend your money on new cyber equipment that does things like let you run on walls faster uh there's lots of passive things like you know better shields better better jumping but there's also lots of active abilities like shooting a bunch of lasers at people doing a big aoe attack around you switching your vision into like an augmented mode that highlights all the enemies but also reveals where there are secrets in the level to go find um because there is that style of new or of just doom hey there's a hidden chest with some stuff over here um you can spend that money upgrading your guns there's lots of loot in this in this game you find these chests with weapons that have different attachments on them and different base stats um and then you're using your again you're using your money to change what type of ammo or not ammo but uh i guess you are changing ammo you're adding some some like bonus damage um you are changing the you know the scopes and the barrels and the magazines and all that other stuff oh don't forget the schluter shit that's what i'm saying like, yeah yeah you, yeah, you get the plus equipment, three also, version the main thing is the talismans oh yes the, the yes. amount of the amount of passive bonuses you can you can stack. It's like, all right, you can get a, yeah. you can get a three percent chance of a drop of fifty credits, or to <laughs> sixty five credits, or a, or a five percent chance uh-huh. of a. And I'm sure, like this is sit like on a table. There's yes. a clear right answer, yes. but this game loves to pose that question. The thing I now take is anything that's gray. I just fucking sell anything. That, I'm at the point now, Rob, where if it's blue, I don't give a fuck about it. So, and I'm like yeah. six levels in, something like that. Um, and that's the way I'm doing it. It's just like, all right, yeah, that sounds good. I'll slot that in instead of this great thing I have here. Um, and I'm like not taking things off my guns once I equip it. I'm just like selling the gun when it's time to go and get a new one. There are a million weapons in this game. There are, you know, I, I figured like, okay, there's going to be, uh, and this is what, this makes it different than the new Doom, right? It's like, it's not like there's a shotgun and then another shotgun. There's like five shotguns in this game. There's like four rifles um i got the bolt the my bolter and i was like oh this feels good which is also something is i think the guns in this feel better than anything they've made before the the combat in general is so fast and fluid did you did you get to the grappling hook in the second or is that the third is that the third level i guess you didn't get back there okay so you get a grappling hook that again just like returnal feels so good to be able to bounce around those levels and kite enemies around you get these big combat arenas where you're just like there are a million dudes coming um and it this, and it lifted from Bloodborne this very smart thing, which is when you get hit, you can hit back to heal, and so and they have a thing and you can upgrade this when your health gets low, you get extra armor so that that last ten HP you have lasts longer than it should, and so you get in these just nail biting moments of like oh my god I just I have to find a weak guy to kill before I go fight the boss more because oh my god I'm about to die and that feeling is so energizing. I swear, it's so, like, I feel, I almost feel like there's tricks being done on, on me, too, uh-huh. where it's like, I there's no way I entered the zone as much as it suddenly feels like I entered the zone as, like, <laughs> shit hit the fan, yeah. where, like, I've just been, like, I walked into a room, full health, get doors shut, get mouth from all sides, yeah. I get worked, like, yeah. completely just worked over, and then, as, like, all the, um you know, systems start like strobing with light where it's like you're out of shields you're out of health and like things are like graying out and suddenly i am just like pop 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 <laughs> like heads exploding right and left yeah. my fucking war dog is like oh, ripping down right we yeah did, by we, the way you have, we, a, pet we, we have a pet dog who's just who, like he's gonna get killed a lot but he respawns so he's like an immortal war dog and he just fucking like demolishes people right and left like you'll see a big fucking jacked armored uh, like 40k dude just get taken down sick. Uh, by this dog it's awesome oh. but like I am pretty certain that like when I'm low on health I feel like there's a little aim assist happening I where bet. like shots well, there are, are finding the their thing mark. is the game is not afraid of giving you aim assist under certain circumstances like one there is just a cyberware thing you can get that is just perfect aim that is the equivalent of like the shadow run 
um uh what is that called why have i blanked on the shadow run name for this thing just like it's like a smart link it's a smart link in shadow run where your gun is automatically aiming at people and one of the smartest things is there's wall running in this game it doesn't feel fantastic but it feels okay and there's a passive auto aim just when you're wall running that automatically makes your gun as long as you're aiming in the general direction, it'll zoom you into the target so that you can feel sick as shit running on the wall blasting. And you can upgrade that so your wall running auto aim gets better if that's a thing you love to do. And that's incredible. Um, this was the other reason why I had to like bounce off Xbox was because it was so disorienting to play it with sticks I where bet. like the movement speed was it, none of it was really tuned for me to be throwing the sticks around and like see like I couldn't wall run hit people for right, shit right and then when i switch to pc um there's an early point where they sort of coach you on this it's like a long very narrow room but it's very tall right and there's dudes yes. on different platforms and you can and you wall run all around it on xbox that that level took me ages to get through just because like i would miss the dude i have to go circle back up and like yeah. try to hit him uh and then on pc it felt i think the way they intended to feel which is like hey this is what wall running does you're a god once right, you're up on these walls. Right, right. Um, the this game really clicked for me, and I, I was enjoying it for the first two levels. And I'll say, you right out the gate, I think it looks fantastic. It's one of the best. It's one of the best examples of how the 40k aesthetic can look. Like I don't know that 40k has looked better than this uh, in a video game. I mean, there are other things that, like you know, the Dawn of War games are doing bigger combat sequences better. Obviously, it's a different type of thing. But in terms of just scale. like Right, exactly. But in terms of like looking at a huge, weird, you know, dark citadel of the future in space, this is doing that shit incredibly well. There's an early like statue you see as you come down an elevator that looks sick. My favorite level so far, and I have no idea if this, I think this gameplay is going to have audio from a person talking, so you may as well mute this. Uh, but I'm linking y'all to this level three, which I guess a light spoiler, Rob. You you are going after a thing called a genitorum, which is like a generator. By the way, everything in 40K is just all the way fake Latin fake constantly, Latin. constantly. Um, and at the beginning of the level, you're like, where the fuck am I? You're just in this sort of scrapyard where you're just like surrounded by these kind of tight cubes of junk, um, you know, stacked high up in the air. And you can walk around it, uh, uh, but you can also at this point, you've gotten a – um, a grappling hook. And so you're able to just like find these points in this, in these kind of towers of trash where you're able to grapple up. I don't know if this person who I linked you to actually does this, but if you jump ahead in this video, there's a point at which you emerge above the, all of the trash. And what's revealed is you're in the middle of this huge gang war of, of like huge, you know, um, turret emplacements on one side and, and this kind of just nonstop charge of enemies on the other side uh and seeing that play out as the the invaders are launching these like flares like these kind of world war one style flares go up in the air to, to light the entire area um is just so 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 cool uh and oh yeah this is wild it's wild and again when you get here rob unlike the person i've linked you to you should make sure to use the grappling hook to try to ascend this thing because <laughs> it just it gives you the sense of like oh they're able to build vertical levels because they know I have this double jump, I have this dash, and I have this grappling hook. Uh, I'm I'm like so high on this game compared like oh, this is again, like nasty destiny vibes. It's nasty destiny vibes. That's what this game definitely has. Um, you know, I'm like seven hours into it now, and about six or seven level. I think seven levels into it, I just kind of had a big escape sequence in a in a certain area. Um, and I'm I'm really liking it. There's still it feels like there's still a lot to go in terms of unlocking gear and upgrading my character and stuff um it's 40 bucks i want to say on steam um maybe there's a discount or i can't remember if that's the discounted With the price skull sale it was 33 so. 33 bucks 34 bucks that's not bad uh and and again it's interesting playing this coming off of bio mutant where this game still has a lot going on in terms of systems uh overlapping and having a bunch of different abilities to, to monitor and all that stuff but it also feels very smartly constrained to what they could pull off. They knew their art team was incredibly good and they wanted to make big, interesting set pieces. Um, they knew that they had uh, some fun traversal mechanics and the level design is based around giving you cool moments around that. I think that the combat is like less, less 
satisfying than than the Doom twenty sixteen, which is I didn't play much of Turtle at all, so I can't compare it. Um, but it's still hectic in the right way, and I think that they've made really smart decisions around how to get the most out of it. Um, and and it's just I, I also unlike Bio Mutant, it's not a sixty dollar game, right? It's not a full price game. Um, and I, I think that like I, I hope that people give this a shot. I don't know that it's going to be. I don't know if you have no 40k love if it hits as hard, but like it's very cool to see this space in 40k. These, these sorts of spaces in the 40k world have always been my favorite because it's not just Space Marines stomping on orc faces. It's a little bit more like, and also all the all the writing in this game is all extremely. It's not self serious, but like it, it's like it's not going to. Is the way I would put it. What'd you say it is? Castlevania S. Yeah, I think that's like fair. it is. It's not bad, but it's also very no. self aware, and it's like yeah. leaning into the um, the chewiness of forty k language and culture. Exactly. Where, Where they yeah, say it's like you're kind going of to storm and stilted, right? But also but- ridiculous and very down to earth. <sighs> right. When they say you're going to storm the genitorum. They know that genitorum is a stupid word, but also they're not going to they're not going to laugh at it themselves. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like uh, word is they're trying to get hands on an old genitorum back out towards Delta seven. Yep. Sure. Of course they are. Of course, they're trying to get the genitorum near Delta seven. Well, this is, um, this is where 40K fandom kind like, yes, there there are people who are like absolute like fast garbage people who yes. embrace this stuff un- unironically where it's like yeah for the emperor and shit like that yeah yeah yeah. but most of what makes 40k work and why a lot of people end up liking it is because it becomes just a canvas for ridiculous overdone sci-fi and you can do whatever right. pastiche you can dream of in this universe where it's like right. do you want to do a cyberpunk uh like do you want to do like deckard versus the alien you can do that Right. Um, or you could, or you could do like, uh, you know, what it, like, like what if a space marine had to solve crimes in the undercity? Right. You can right. do that, and and yeah, it kind of works on that level. Um, yeah. One thing this clip also brought to mind: this game, uh, and I, maybe this is where the Doom, the new Doom comparisons come to mind for me a little bit. Mm-hmm. This game does not want you to feel encumbered by, uh, like, constrained yeah. by movement, like. You will jump farther than you think is possible. Your guy, <laughs> your guy will uh, mantle ridiculous uh, cliffs where it's like there's no way I can I can jump up there. Oh, contraire, you absolutely <laughs> can, and you're supposed to. Yes. Uh, and so everything about this game is just kind of like the limits other shooters are put on you. They still exist, but everything's just moved farther out, moved farther yeah. up, and so everything just has this ridiculous um, like superhero. Uh, scale. I figured it out, Rob. The reason why this clip is this person is like moving slowly through this entire place. They're playing on PS5. They're playing with a controller. And like I did also start playing with a controller in this game when I when I started on P- on PC. And I was like, I don't think this is it. I don't. I feel like I'm like you said. I I don't think the controller moves fast enough for it. I don't feel like I'm able to like swing around quick enough and take advantage. This, this of was it. Doom Eternal's problem as right. well. Like, yeah, I know people totally. have, and you know, if your circumstances. Uh, instruct, I, was, I played to, Doom Eternal with with a controller, but I felt or not Eternal. Sorry, I played Doom 2016. Well, with no, there, there are like specific differences between 2016 oh, and Eternal. Interesting. That people, okay. think, I mean, obviously, I think their games are better on a, a you know mouse and keyboard. Period. Um, but uh, the like I you know I bounced off Doom Eternal uh, when it first came out. I was with Rob. I was like ah you know they, they kind of lost me here. Maybe 2016 was just the one for me. <clears throat> and yeah. then when I got the uh, Series X, I was like oh. You know, what? I'm gonna give it a shot again. Download it like the 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 backwards compatibility updates make that game like sing like at like 4K 60 FPS. Like I'm gonna try this again. I you know 2016 is one of my favorite games of all time. Like I'm I'm going back in. I, I felt like there was something wrong with me trying to aim. I was like I have played a lot of these games. I'm not an expert, yeah, but like yeah. I'm good at them, and I cannot line up a fucking shot in this game to save my life. Huh. And so I got about an hour in and like I Google things like, do I need to change sensitivity? Like what, what's the deal? I'm like, yes, there are things you could do, but like the, the general takeaway was just, 
you, this game was clearly built for a mouse and keyboard and you can play it on yeah. a controller, but what yeah. you should really be doing is trying to play it on a, on a PC. And I guess on an Xbox, you could in theory connect a mouse and keyboard just fine. Um, uh, but, um, yeah, I, I had a similar sort of sentiment where it's like, yeah, you can do this, but I don't know that you're taking full advantage of what the game's capable of or even asking of you if you're trying to right, use the, the different right. input better than some games really want you to just be pirouetting and flinging bullets in all directions as you arc through the air. And that's real hard to do on a controller. Yeah. And it's like second nature on PC. And like if you've built a level to work that one way, it's real hard to make it work the other way on a controller without yeah. a lot of like really clever assists, which I would say like the new doom series did a really good job of making controller feel adequate uh, to purpose. Uh, mm-hmm. But I would say also, I'm not sure put pushes traversal as hard as Necromunda does. Right. Sure. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I talked about the third level, but even that second level where like you're on a giant train um, <clears throat> and are, are running and jumping across this huge, this gigantic underground <laughs> super train just feels so cool. Um, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm happily surprised. I would say I, I'm very happy that Strumont Studios found this like, middle ground in terms of what they're trying to build in terms of the the limits of of their reach you know what i mean and and knowing where where they could nail it i still think it's a very it's bloated but in a way that i'm very much enjoying you know what i mean like i i feel like i like it when there's a lot going on and i can i can i will finish playing this game for the night sometimes and then be like i'm gonna spend 20 minutes just going over my weapon mods and going to the shop and upgrading my stuff and like that's a good you know, come down from huge battle arena mode, you know? I was thinking about this in relation to um, the Biomutant discussion and, like, what those of us who like the term tend to mean when we use, like, Eurojank is, like, a positive. Um, mm-hmm. and I think Which, again, it, we know is a term that is, like... Yeah. But the not, thing I think I yeah. associate with is, like, a lot of the games that I associate with that that are, like, are examples of it being done really well. It's that you can almost, you know, they make you feel almost like you're a, like part of the team. That you, you're part of the same discussion of like, wouldn't it be cool if? Uh-huh. And it's not necessarily a scatter discussion. It's always we have a core idea, direction we're moving. And we keep, and for some reason, people kept coming up with ideas that would better serve this fantasy. This one specific, right. like really specific vision of like yes. how all this should work. Could like, could it all be executed well? No, but somehow it all serves this like, you're going to push this idea as fo- like, farther than you really can and it's farther than you would expect it to go yep and i think that's like where this game is is pulling this off where it's like no we want you to be like a super powered judge dread like figure in Uh the 40k world unconstrained by gravity or (laughs) yeah and and we're going to build out all the things like everything that exists in 40k that like could turn you into that sort of effortless badass Mm-hmm. We're going to build those systems into the game and let you like upgrade them and develop them and push them even further and like let the game get intentionally unbalanced uh, as you emerge as like a, um, you know, <laughs> high level, high level RPG character in a in a yes. world, a world of level one enemies. Um, and that's I think that's what they're kind of pulling off here. It's like, is there too much going on? Probably. Does it all kind of push in the same direction? Yeah, it does. And I think for me, like where it clicked, where I knew this game was going to work for me was the hub area. The mm-hmm. first thing, like after the after the tutorial level, it does a thing that I am a sucker for, which is mysterious ally is uh-huh. like, I saved your ass, but I uh-huh. own it now, too. Here, <laughs> welcome to this cool uh, mini mall of <laughs> like badass vendors who all have like weird personalities yep. and really cool store inventory that like <laughs> just browsing you see the different paths the game could take and you're like I want to do all of it and you can if you're just willing to like grind and like kill enough <laughs> dudes which I am you are you simply are uh the yeah that that section is really cool and and uh it, it's funny you you kind of attach that collection of traits to to these games and i think that's right the thing that it actually reminds me of are ironically my favorite ameritrash tabletop or uh, board games right where similarly throw it all in baby i don't know if you've ever seen or played fantasy flights android 
board game. No. Which is, I need to, after this is over, I'm going to link you to a trailer for that board game. It takes place in the Android universe that most famously was where they set their Netrunner game. And it's like, everyone plays a car- You're basically investigating a murder. Um, uh, and every player character has their own separate deck of story cards that they're working through. Uh, every player, it's a big map of the sit of the city, and then also a space elevator to the moon. I want to say the moon, maybe it's a space station. Um, and every character has their own car thing, like ruler, basically for how far their car can go. Every every character is had. There's an entire sideboard called the conspiracy board, and it's that same uh, thing of like, yeah, we had a bunch of cool ideas for how to enable this fantasy. And does it work as a balanced, special little game? N- not really. Are you going to have a very goofy, fun time uh, enabling this fantasy and for yourself? And like, for the time that you're playing this game, seeing weird stuff happen and and almost forgiving the hard edges on it because of how much it's going for it. Yes. And the line between this works and it doesn't work is a hundred percent. You know subjective from person to person and, and ver- what i really mean obviously it's subjective from person to person but it varies a great deal from person to person where that line is for me i cyber i divine cybermancy is on the right side of that line for you it was not i think for both of us necromunda hired gun saying that name one more time necromunda hired gun is on the right side of it so check that out um anyone else want to want to shout anything out uh uh playing anything else worth worth talking about robert you checked out i played a bit of overboard overboard the new yeah this is the inkle game inkle. uh that sort of came out without any fanfare uh yeah. it is a murder mystery adventure but you're the murderer uh it's very Agatha that's a great christy ass that's a great or, pitch. Um, dorothy parker sure. uh or, or sorry dorothy sayers sorry mm-hmm. um where like it's full of very heightened characters and absurd stereotypes of uh, like upper class uh, interwar Britain. It opens with you hurling your shit heel husband off a uh, ocean liner. And the next morning waking up and realizing that in eight hours, you're going to be in New York. And all you got to do is keep from getting caught for the next eight hours. Uh, but the catch is it's a bit like edge of tomorrow where mm. like every time you fuck up, your character jerks awake at sorry. Uh, your your uh-huh. character awakens. Thank uh, you. At uh. at eight a.m. like the same day, and is consumed with the thought of like, this is what I did wrong. I didn't like figure out so and so secret. I That's didn't get so and so on my side. And so it's very much the structure is very like Twine game like in that mm-hmm. it's a lot of going to the same conversations and like quickly like going through most of the same options, but like. Checking out just one different fork, maybe you didn't explore. Right. And, and um, I, I played, I played the, two runs. I played two runs of it. I just want to point out that like it, it does a really good job of highlighting the things you have and haven't done. There's like fast forward features that like hits yeah. like uh, it marks out colored, you know, the things you've already done, so you know the paths that you can, you know, go down. I, in my second run, I just wanted to find out if I could your character could kill themselves immediately. And the game is twice like, you sure you want to go off? And I was like, yes, I do. And it's like, all right, I'm done. And you just like immediately throw yourself into the water. And then the cycle overboard. Yeah. Yeah. I had a lot of bad runs where, um, like, cause every time you start getting caught, there are dialogue options that are basically like you do the full villain reveals herself Mm -hmm. at the end. And I do it again. Uh, (laughs) that, that kind of stuff. Um, and there are some very funny ones where, like, you can just keep escalating the final confrontation until you're like, it's full Phantom of the Opera. You're going over the side of the boat. Um, and the way it handles that is is very funny. It's a stylish game. Uh, it's got a great yeah, I soundtrack. I love the look of it. Yeah, the characters are really well written. They're very funny. Uh, and also, and this is key, it does follow. What's the way to. Uh, Okay, there's two flavors of like mystery, I would say, in in this genre. Where like, and I think Agatha Christie's maybe a good practitioner of this of this type of mystery. Where it's like, do these mysteries really hold together? Do they make a lot of sense? Are they believable? Um, and a lot of times, what makes the genius detective in these stories a genius is that they make 
unsupportable leaps. deductive yes. leaps. Yes, 100%. Where, where it's just like idea association. And as the detective unpacks their reasoning, just by speaking the association into existence, everyone's like, well, that's ironclad. That's yeah, that well, totally that makes, follows. Yeah, that's it. Uh-huh. And so this is one of the things like this becomes harder to get away with because the first couple times I was like, no, there's no evidence. There's no case against me. Like, I'm going to be fine. <laughs> but people just say things in the final confrontation. And it's like, mm-hmm. aha, we that proves it's you. And you're like, that doesn't prove shit. Right. Like, let's right. go to court. Prove it, <laughs> motherfucker. But you're at the you're, court of the sea. You know, all I have to do is turn the room against you. And your your enemy here, uh, your, your antagonist, is this um, odd little uh, Sikh major for, who's retired from uh, British military service, who is just garrulous and talkative and uh, always sort of just probing into things. And like every single fucking time, you're like, I'm going to get away with this, going to get away with this. And you just watch this guy spin theories out of nothing. And you're like, this makes no sense. And everyone's like, aha, take her away. (laughs) And so you have to like proof yourself against not the standards of like evidence in a real court of law. You have to proof yourself against the standards of evidence in the denouement of a classic like 20th century whodunit murder mystery. Right. Where like all it takes is the detective being like, this seems like two things that I could associate with each other <laughs> and you're fucked. Uh, that sounds good. That's not, I mean, it sounds bad. Like that part feels like it stings, but also as someone who has like watched a lot of Poirot and has a lot of fondness for this sort of thing, seeing that it represented from the antagonist's position sounds very funny. I just, yeah, it's, I, it's very charming. You, you never want to be on the other end of a Columbo one more thing, except I kind of always want, I've always wanted that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> one more, one more thing. I uh, would say is Columbo as full of shit though, as like a Poirot, like I no, feel like Columbo no, usually no. tugs at threads that are real. He, he does. He does. Poirot is, I don't know. So there's some Poirot episodes where it's like le- le- more legitimate detective stuff, but there are. I think the big ones are. Well, the thing is, the crimes in those stories are also absurd. That is the other half of it, is that the crimes are are often set up to lean into the absurdity of either motive or opportunity um, uh, or, or means um, in such a way that it would take someone ridiculous to solve. I mean, this is this is the problem with it. This is also why I end up not being as big on this British style of murder mystery as yeah. I am on the kind of American detective novel. Um, but... I think there are some Columbo episodes that I've seen where where the there is still a fundamental leap that is made necessary by the quality of the of the, the crime in question. Um, I have a I have a adjacent question. I have watched maybe two episodes in my life of um, Murder She Wrote. Should I watch Murder She Wrote? <laughs> It was always on like USA when I was a kid, when I was homesick. Yeah. Uh, I was like, do I want to watch this? I don't know. I feel like I've seen stuffy. more than two, but I couldn't tell I couldn't tell you anything about it other than her face and Angela like, the opening credits. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know. Rob. Rob, have you seen? Not I'm in the same boat. I've seen a few Not episodes. Enough. Okay. Now. Right in. Let us know. It just felt too to me, it always felt I know we said this about the mentalist, but the thing is the mentalist is like a full two generations of TV show. Ahead yes, of the Capes yeah, of the Week uh-huh. like network TV show. Yeah. Murder She Wrote is squarely in that like we're just gonna do this week after week after week. Um yeah. and I've been I don't know if that's I don't know if that's for me. To me it, it seemed to it see that and Matlock seem to be in very similar territory of like yeah. being held together by like beloved uh silent generation stars. Right. Right. Yeah, fair enough. Did we ever talk about that Perry Mason? show rob we should find an excuse to talk about that show uh you know i we didn't did I, you ever finish it i liked it but okay, i didn't yeah. love it i was expecting to love it i didn't okay i liked it quite a bit so and see i liked carnival row quite a bit and i did not these are the tv opinions that we've had over the last year and haven't but now had a vector there'll be no to one talk to about stop any us of them time. no one can stop us now it's a new age a new age of heroes uh <laughs> Uh, let me shout out something really quick. Operation Tango, um, a co-op game about hacking and heisting. Um, eh, heisting is wrong. H- hacking and investigating your like spies on an adventure. It's a, it's a co-op game. I played through all of it with a friend. It's short. It's 
much time did I put in this? I want to say like two and a half hours, something like that. You know, it was like a oh, night. I saw, of, I saw a trailer for this. Hours. It looked neat. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. Uh, one player uh, plays as uh, a hacker who kind of gets maps of the area or has, you know, the, a way to interact with cameras or other parts of the, like, technology in the level. The other character is an on, on-ground agent, and they are, like, walking around a map trying to sneak past, you know, cameras or drones. Um, it's short. It's, like, six levels long. Um, it's It has kind of a – I mean this complimentary – in a complimentary sense. Um, it really looks like a um, – God, what is the name of that – Eshorance. It, it looks like an Eshorance commercial. Yeah, it does. You know what I'm talking does. about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pink haired spy uh-huh. lady. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's the vibe, and it and it works. It mostly works. It's a it's a 3D first person game for the person who's playing the agent. You're walking around facilities, and there's like a really cool level on a train where you're trying to like figure out who the hacker is, who, and and you're kind of working with your partner who is able to pull up. You know the all the information about everyone on the train. Not all the information you can pull up some of it. The person your your hacker can pull up other parts of it. You're trying to hack into their phones. Um, it, it's it's just like a really fun you know three hour co op adventure. Uh, there's a lot of it that feels like um, variations on Space Team or Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, where it's a lot of like you know oh no this this machine is gonna blow up. I need you to tell me you know, uh, uh, what lever to pull or whatever. And the, the hacker has to be like, okay, if you see one red light, then don't pull the third lever. You know, it's like that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there are other, there are moments where it's like higher or lower. There's an entire section. that's like a rhythm, almost like, or not a rhythm game, but one player. I didn't see this when I was playing the agent in this one and someone else was the hacker. And the hacker was like in basically a like guitar hero track bouncing between <laughs> like data boards dodging incoming things as if they're like an audio surf level or something um so it does a lot i and i only i I, we kind of bounced between roles all the way through so i got to see both hacker levels and agent levels but i'm so curious about every level from the other side Mm -hmm. so i would say if you wanted to do both sides you'd probably still get four or five hours out of it basically um and there there are levels that just look really cool there's like a, a, a big section at the towards the end of the game where there's a big outdoor area with like fireworks going off and it's it's I don't know. It was it was a really fun time. So uh, that's Operation Tango, uh, which I want to say is is like twenty bucks on Steam. I don't know if it's out. It must be also out on consoles. Oh, actually, here's an important thing on Steam. Um, it has a friend pass. If you buy, it, you can download this thing called the friend pass that is the game. And if you have someone who has the game, you can play the game with them. Uh, so it's twenty bucks for two people to play. You know, you could you could split this game, so to speak, with somebody for ten ten bucks each and have a, a fun night with it. So Operation Tango. I'm glad I'm more games are finding out. ways to Same. make that work Same. because otherwise it's sort of it, it, the like the economics un- of making them don't make sense. And also, if exactly. you hobble the game by not allowing it to like really lean into the co op part of it, then it just seems like you like everybody loses. And so there's more more like. Between like it takes two, yeah, something like this, like the fact like this becoming like this is like a spinoff of the like why doesn't this local co op game have online multiplayer yes. <clears throat> gripe, which feels like this is like just like an evolution of uh, born out of people really like these games uh, and like finding huh. new ways to kind of kind of make them work is is cool. Yeah, totally. This is to be clear, it you need to have. Uh, a a co op partner. I don't think there is like a single player version of it, um, or anything like it that. It doesn't seem so, like it would make so, any any no, sense. It, it doesn't at all, at all, at all. Um, any other any other things you want to shout out? Uh, I'm uh, unfortunately less high, but at least want to mention it. I played like ninety minutes of Stonefly, which is the the new game oh, from right. the studio that did uh, Creature in the Well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Creature in the Well was a game that came out a couple years back that. I like you tell me, hey, yeah, we pinball. got this genre and we're going to throw pinball yeah. on top of it. Like, like, let's let's go. Like, I don't even like pinball all that much, but I love games mashed up with with pinball. And I, I just like I love games that mash genres that don't make on their face. Don't seem like they make a lot of sense. You know, Henry Hatsworth uh, for the DS is one of my which mashed up a, a really good uh, action platformer with a uh, match three game on the second screen. I, it just crushes me that. There has not been another one of those. I, I love that game. And so I really wanted to like Creature in the Well. It looked great. It sounded great. And I think Kato and I were on the same page. I think both of I 
tried that game. It was like a game on paper that sounded really appealing, but the actual playing of it didn't didn't do a whole lot for me. I want to say it was a roguelike, and I think some of that structure, like it just didn't. I, I would have preferred it to have been more of a straightforward uh, story, um, but I might be getting some of the details wrong. I, Either yeah, way, I, I bounced think it was. It. I think that was. I, I recently dipped into that over like the beginning of the year when I had nothing else to play. Yeah. I don't think it was a roguelike. I just think the progression was pretty slow, and the core action just wasn't. It yeah, was, the pinball it, part just yeah. like yeah, it didn't feel good to yeah. to hit. The it felt things. okay, um, but it didn't so, feel good enough for me to keep playing it after a couple hours. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah, if you want to, I, I forget that. Damn, what is that? The pinball Metroidvania, because I want to. Uh, Yoko's Metroid. Island Express. Yes. Yeah. I never got around yeah, to it. Here it's yeah. great. Oh, so man, what a what a <laughs> that was a great game. Um, anyway, so the, the new one from that studio, um, uh, from Flight School Studio, is this game called Stonefly. It's on everything. I think it's also on Game Pass. Um, uh, the kind of setup is that you, it's in like I don't know, like a bu- like a bug world mm-hmm. where you're playing as people. Um, but there are also other people that just look like you're like playing Mass Effect. Like they're just like other like kind of like aliens. Um, but there's like all these different types of people in this miniature bug world. And, and these people build uh, like me- mechs um, that are kind of fashioned after different bugs. And that's how they navigate the space. And so it's got a little bit of the kind of like, you know, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids vibe of like, oh, it's so cool to like go around and like jump from – you know, these leaves um, that are that are enormous to you because you're you're so small. Like there's an opening sequence where you're jumping around on a on a fucking cricket. It's just like that's just like very charming. Yeah. It's just a cricket. It's yeah. not a mech, yeah. mech, mecha cricket. It's just a it's just a cricket. Uh-huh. Um, and, and all that is really great. It's got such a I don't even know how to describe the art style. Like there are parts of it that uh, um, reminded me of. Uh, oh, what was that? Um it's the UK anime. The Telltale it was an early te- uh, Wallace and Gromit. Um, it's got like a little bit of like a Wallace and Gromit uh, vibe to like some of the character design. Whereas with the environment art is just I don't know. I, I don't describe it except it's like it's beautiful. Like the, the the art really took me in, and I was like, this is it. I bounced off the previous studio's game, but like I clearly like vibe with what they're going for. And then spent like half an hour in the combat phase and like didn't. I didn't like the controlling part of it. Um, That's a bummer. You're controlling like a me- like the, the basics of it are like your 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 you know you could there's a lot of customization you can do to your like your insect mech uh, going forward and, and maybe that would change some of my thoughts on it uh, going forward. Like the little bits the consistency I saw in the reviews of Stonefly were. It's like really fun, but a lot of grind to get all the stuff you want for your mech. Um, and maybe that's something they can, you know, work out in in a patch uh, going forward. But I don't know. You like you're you jump up. And then you kind of like float in the air and you like have this like, I don't know, like a laser type thing that you can use to stun or attack enemies below. You're also like using the gusts of air to push them off like the ledges. It's like, hey, you're a bug. Get fucked. I'm going <laughs> to blast you with a gush of wind and like hopefully you'll survive on, on the way down. Um, it's all stuff again, like Creature in the Wild. Like this sounds neat. Like this is like I like these types of games. I like action games. I like platformer games. I like them in weird worlds. And even as I'm saying it now. Like now I just want to convince myself to give it another try and hopefully it'll click on the second go through because I, I did like a really intense combat sequence last night and didn't even finish the combat. I was like, I don't, I don't like anything about how this, like the flow of this oh. is going, but um, maybe you'll check it out differently. Yeah, I, it's, it does it's, have robots in it. It does have mechs in it. So I feel like, yeah, it's such a neat yeah. look. It, it, it really is cool. Um, So, you know, if you've played it and maybe if you had a similar response, you know, feel free to try to, convince me otherwise I, I did play it on xbox and there is a switch version and you know that's always a world where i can give a game like longer to marinate if it if it has kind of a, a poor yeah. uh, opening or one that it doesn't quite work for me but yeah that's don't fly like if that sounds neat to you give it a shot you know may, maybe the you know it'll it'll click better for you than it did for me but, but boy it's at least worth like wandering around in the world for a little bit because it's it really unlike uh it feels like you're it's that's, it's not a painterly feel but man it just feels like you're in yeah, it has like a I, I looked at some footage of it i mean I, I remember looking at the the trailer for when it first dropped um there is like a it's not cell shaded it's like flat shaded i mean i don't you know these are the limits of my vocabulary on mm-hmm. art uh coming uh to to bear well, on this it's just- part of it is that it feels a little bit like each part of the world has been sketched or colored in by hand sure but then it's still like a totally polygonal style so you'll get like a you'll be on a leaf and the leaf feels like it's been pulled out of a nature book or like a book about leaves you know what i mean a book about different plants 
Um, uh, but then that's just still layered. Like, it's just out in the world. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it, it, it frequently feels like objects that they appear to be two-dimensional, right. but they are yes, not. Totally. And so you, you, you ha- there's a lot of, like, really wild depth to and the, the characters aesthetic. also have very cool designs and you know all the mechs look dope like i i think it it the look of it is stunning so i might i might yeah, download this yeah. and give it a shot so yes yeah i'll be curious to see if you if, if, if it's any and again i like just got the opening mm-hmm. mech didn't have any yeah who knows maybe and, maybe and, and maybe it's the case that in, you'll be like okay i'm starting to make it's starting to click who knows yeah or like it's you know either it is very clearly like in the ui like you will have like six other you right. know, combat right. and movement options, and maybe those would have made, um, you know, the initial thing that I have uh, bounced off of, like, feel better. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah it, it, again, like, if nothing else, uh, go look at this game yes. because it is it is striking. And it just makes me, like, I'll keep watching what they do, even if Stoneflight doesn't work for me. Like, at some point, like, I'm vibing so hard on what they're trying to do. There will be the magic games that, the, like, I, it, like, line here's up. Here's a question. How is the music in that game? I remember liking one of the songs in the trailers. Did that, did that hit you at all? Hmm. Do you, I don't. It's not yet, certainly. I don't, I, okay. Yeah, I guess I don't, don't have don't have a strong opinion, but that's I, that's to, neither here nor there. On I think the, the music necessarily. I just don't know that I was yeah. paying yeah. all that. I do briefly it, speaking of music. I do want to go back and say I think the music in uh, Hired Gun fucking rules. It's like my exact <laughs> type of Rob, Rob is just like just like chuckling to yeah. himself as you bring it's that up. It's good. It's like very. It's metal, obviously, but it's like this very melodic, you know. Uh, style of metal that has that has a lot of just scratch my brain guitar solos in it that is playful in the way that the game is about its own like hard ass nature you know <laughs> so um all right let's take a quick dip in the question bucket game i just want to oh, i just want to briefly point yes. out uh, cuz i clicked on flight school studios like steam page yeah. And I was like, there's more things listed here. I thought like the last game they did was Creature in the Well. I was like, nah, like, you know, they did some other things, including they were the co-developers on a Chex Quest HD. Incredible. Um, Good. So, hey, Fantastic. you know. Someone had to do the paid. work, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, gaming at vice.com. Subject question is how you get a question in front of us. Kel from Ohio writes in and says, I have been really enjoying hearing y'all talk about Resident Evil Village over the past few weeks. I want to get your thoughts on a trend that I think the game participates in. I loved the slightly more grounded horror focus on Resident Evil 7 and was disappointed to come away from Village feeling as if the game was making fun of folks for taking 7 seriously. From the Ethan body horror as comedy bits to certain boss quips that break the fourth wall, I felt the takeaway was, these games have always been silly and you shouldn't have expected otherwise, which made me feel somewhat rotten. Another game that does this is Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which shifts its present-day plotline to a parody of game dev studios with multiple instances of dunking on aspects of the series that came before. I'd enjoyed the intrigue of the modern day in those games, even though it was pretty messy, and felt similarly made fun of for it. I could be off base or taking emp- or letting empathy take the wheel too much here, but I wanted to hear y'all's thoughts on this. Thanks for making such great work across the entire site and being authentic to yourselves at each turn. Cal from Ohio. Do you have any thoughts on on this sort of thing where like a later game in the series pokes fun at the series in a way that like undercuts some of what came before in some ways? I think these are both examples of it to some degree, but. Yeah, I mean, th- those are both franchises in which the mythology has become so sprawling and ridiculous that I don't. I, I mean, I wouldn't take it personally because if the if the games themselves were so insulted by their own sprawling and convoluted mythology, they would have rebooted and stopped doing it. But I think it's, I mean, I, you know, I guess tonally speaking, you know, I could see how it might rub you the wrong way, but also like take the games at what they're saying, which is, yep, this has gone off the rails. And you know, what's the, the solution to just keep building track <laughs> and, and see and see where it goes. And that, you know, I mean, you know, Resident Evil, you know, there are, there are part, you know, without I don't want to spoil Resident Evil 8, goes into a spoiler yep. cast, but like there are elements of Resident Evil 8 that address d- d- core, core mysteries original. that no one thought they needed right, an answer right, to right. that are foundational uh to like the, the origins of Resident and Evil that stuff as isn't like a played franchise. as a joke. So some of the like no, origin story no. type stuff is are is just lore building fact of the world. It's the it is the Ethan body horror stuff and and some of the other stuff that I think is played for comedy's sake. I, I don't mind it. But I'm also not someone who was like, I mean, I, I thought Resident Evil 7 was great. And I played like two thirds of it or something and was very scared of it. I just also have heart, room in my heart for this other type of thing. 
Um, and I think I'm the same way with the Assassin's Creed series. I liked, I, I really wanted the modern day Desmond game. I was the person who was like, I'm ready. Give yeah, me- sol- solve that problem. Figure it right, out. Totally. Exactly. Right. I was like, I hope, I hope that AC3 ends with finally I get controlled Desmond. It's the modern day. It's a whole, it's a whole like little mini city like that. And you know, you got some Desmond stuff, but it was not that, um, no. <laughs> at all. Uh, and so like I, I was bought in in that way. But a thing that I think about a lot as a storyteller, um, and I know that the teams are not always consistent across multiple franchises i mean so that's an element is sometimes you're handed a game to work on that or you wind up in a position where you're like i'm telling a story in this world that i do not care about i'm going to try to find part of it or way to tell a story here that i think is interesting and that that happens well, especially ac yes. is is there are you know d- d- you know dozens of studios not only working on an individual title mm-hmm. but one in which like even if you're the core uh like studio at the heart of like building the foundation for the game. Like, I don't, you know, who it would not surprise me if like that stuff is built out of like prototypes and it's like, all right, well then how do we graph that into Assassin's Creed? And it's like, now you got to figure out how your idea to go to Egypt, uh, like makes sense in an Assassin's Creed. Cause that's the only way you can get the budget right. to, right. uh, to, to, you know, to see that vision fully. Through. But also I, I will say even when the, when there is consistency, I do think that making a thing, telling the story yourself gives you a different relationship to the work and the characters and the setting than what it does as a, as a consumer of it. Um, I think that like your relationship to the, even the emotions you're evoking is an, are not always as invest. You're not always as invested in the same things as, as the audience is. Um, and that means that you can get bored or tired of your own shtick quicker sometimes because you can get, be interested in some other part of it. And then like, Bounce between different modes. You know, I, I think that I wouldn't be surprised if the next Resident Evil game goes back to being more horror focused um, and less goofy about some of this stuff. But RE8 did both. Right. Like there it, were moments it, you know, had sure. its cake and ate, yeah. and ate it too. Totally. And like that was it proved that actually you don't have to you can give people like myself what they loved about RE7, but maybe just not at the pace of. 16 hours of it straight with, right. <laughs> with no right. w- 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 I, uh, n- n- I think the thing I want to get at is like I would say if you if it's possible for you to to, to do this consider that the shifts in the, these series have more to say about the people making them than about what they think you should feel about the past right. series right? Right. Um, right I don't think that it's an it's a it's a I don't think anyone is admonishing you for having enjoyed the horror of Resident Evil 7 I think it's much more about hey as the people making this game we did that. Let's do this other thing. Let's lean into this part of the thing that has us excited or interested. And they also... And if you don't you like know, it, you don't we, like it. That's also fine, well, right? And also, we can consume, play, experience a game over the course of what, you know, at most a couple of months. Yeah. Like, these people build these things for years. Yeah. And so whatever cynicism you have as, a, you know, an experiencer of them, imagine that experience, you know, over four to five years. And then if you've worked on multiple of them... Suddenly, you're like 15 years into a career, and you've made assassin. All you've made is Assassin's Creed games. Mm-hmm. I can see why you would be like maybe not bitter, but like a little more playful with like the bullshit at that point because yeah. yeah. um, totally. it's just a different way of interacting with those worlds and spaces. Mm-hmm. Um, this one comes in from Dan from Mississippi. I recently played Final Fantasy X. But I'm currently playing through X two on Game Pass. I never played these games on release. I was a Dreamcast fan on their release. But despite having no nostalgia for them, uh, I, I really like them. These games have their problems, largely their translation slash extremely awkward voice work and even worse fan service like treatment of female characters. But I fell in love with the aesthetics and battle system, especially Final Fantasy X-2's battle system, which I'm, which I'm surprised they never reuse. So my question is, when's the last time you're... Uh, you approached an older game that you had no nostalgia for and discovered that you loved it for the first time. I feel like this is a Rob mm. question more than anything. I feel yeah, like Rob. This is like, was like uh, checking in with Rob on Monday morning. What do you got for the pod? Uh-huh. Insert game from five to seven years ago that Rob uh, revisited from a Steam sale or not. I don't think Rob doesn't, Rob doesn't need a sale to, 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 to have a reason to revisit an old game, but I never, I never revisit old games. So I'm, I'm not, I'm I'm like I, I I'm not really equipped to mm-hmm. to answer this one. Yeah, I mean, I, but I think people already know what my answers kind of are in in some ways. Like, I think so. Yeah, yeah, it's there's there's a lot of cases where I just come to a game after years and I'm like, this was this was really cool. All right, yeah, uh, pe- more people should have been into this. Um, but that is so common for me that it's like, 
Oh, that one. I remember that one time that happened. Like that's <laughs> monthly <laughs> for me. Right. Sure. That makes sense. I um, it's normally stuff that for me, it's normally stuff that I already liked something like it. Right. So like. Yeah, when I got, finally got around to playing uh, Alpha Protocol and had a good time with it, this was years ago now, uh, but it was years after it came out, I was like, yeah, it was really good. Like, yeah, of course I liked it. I'm coming off of being a Mass Effect fan. This is Mass Effect, but spy stuff. You know what I mean? So that's not something that I could be too, too surprised by, I guess, you know? I think I think the, 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 the closest I can think of an answer on this is it's always fun to get like that entryway game into a franchise that you don't. So it's less like going back to a thing and realizing you liked it mm. more that like the Monster Hunter world like is like, oh, this got me in. Like I, now right, I understand now what's are. interesting about it. I love it, too. I'm excited for sure. the new announcements. And so like that happened with Dark Souls as well. Like I didn't play Demon Souls, bounced off Dark Souls, went back to Dark Souls when Dark Souls 2 came out right. and then, you know, completely fell for it. But, um, you know, that's you know, that's that's more the case where I get excited to find out why people are interested in a thing. And, the, and then it's like yeah. trying to find your your way into it. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything. I, I feel like the, the period for me in doing this was eight, eight or nine years ago when I was where I was playing a bunch of like old uh uh like when I was emulating games basically from like mm-hmm. the SNES era or whatever. Um you going back and I, I was doing a project forever ago now along with some friends where we were just playing the Sega Genesis games that came out before Sonic did, like what were the pre Sonic Genesis games? What were the games that before you and I played it, we were playing. And and that experience is really fun because it also just gave you a good collection of like, this is what this is what monster kid. Right. Exactly. Uh, um, virtual highlight, uh, what else? I mean, like going back and playing Echo the Dolphin there was something like I played Echo the Dolphin as a kid, but I didn't play Echo the Dolphin as a kid. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. and, and so like going back and playing Echo and being like, this is good and weird in a way that I don't know I understood as a kid, you know? Um, that was extremely <laughs> funny. People should, people should, there people, are aliens. there are aliens. And, uh, is Echo an alien? That final boss fight is actually truly terrifying and people should. Go watch the final boss fight from Echo the I feel Dolphin. Like I feel like if that comes up like every couple of years, does. someone like points out yes. the weirdness yes. of Echo the Dolphin, totally. and then there's a whole cycle of people realizing how weird Echo the Dolphin yeah. is. Totally, totally. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably the last time I did it for sure. We got some food questions here. We have a request from someone who wrote in. Alice says, to celebrate the launch of Waypoint Plus, can we get an official recipe for Rob's crummets? Rob, I think the people need it. I think the people want it. I think people deserve it. So, the th- remember, if you'll recall, that's a fail. Like, they didn't work. Ergo, something went wrong. Like, there's a recipe for English muffins re- that I suspect uh-huh. would yield English muffins. But uh-huh. it would not yield a crummet. And I don't know why. You don't know what the, right, the secret ingredient is. Or the secret step in the process. Now... I think an investigation is required. Now, there's an argument to be made, and some people did make this argument, that what I must have accidentally made was a tigel. I don't know what that That's is. That's an What's Italian English muffin that not as leavened. Um, oh. it, it, it's, a, it's sort of a thin disc of English muffin-like oh, material. Oh, I see this. This looks, like a tige- this looks like a crummets to me. Yeah. T-I-G-E-L-L-E. Right. And so my actual guess would be to produce the crumb experience, you just make it to gel. Now, knowing me, if I were to make it to gel, I would end up, with end up playing English muffin. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because uh-huh. that's just how it is in the federal oh, this bureau of gel control. with a little little prosciutto on it. This looks all right. Yeah, it looks great. Oh, this all looks good to me. Um, another question. This is gonna be our last question. I don't know if we can top it. Craig writes in. Hi, gang. I have been enjoying your recent forays into the food bucket. I should say real quick, Austin's talking now, not Craig. I was ready to to retire the food bucket, but then this question came in. I was like, we got to answer this question. I have to read this question. I'm not going to retire the food bucket, but, you know, put it on ice for a little bit. Let it chill. We've done a lot of food. We'll see in the after dark. Right. Got a little cellophane over the top. Like, preserve the food bucket. Preserve preserve the the food bucket. Salt it, whatever it is. I've been enjoying your recent forays into the food bucket, and I thought I would raise a potentially controversial topic. (laughs) 
where do you all stand on licking a plate? <laughs> I'm from the UK, and as with most places, I imagine, licking your plate at the end of a meal is considered rude and or disgusting. I have three reasons that I am no. pro plate licking. Let's go. One, all right. uh-huh. some food just tastes better when licked straight off the plate. For example, <laughs> baked beans on toast is something we f- we fairly regularly eat for lunch here. And for some reason, the last bit of bean sauce tastes especially good when licked off the plate. Couldn't tell you why, but they do. <laughs> Number two, it is actually not rude. I see it as a compliment to the chef. Three, you know when you open a yogurt and on the other side of the lid, there's a little layer of yogurt? You lick that off, right? Why is a plate any different? To be clear, I'm not going around licking my plate in restaurants. I was, that was my first question. But I do wish I could. Come in private. <laughs> Have a good one, right. Craig. So why? So why? If, if you're unwilling to do it in the public sphere, by definition, to some degree, you're admitting you're undercutting your entire argument. You're saying it's like, oh, it's not rude. Or you're saying you know it's rude if you know you know it's rude. like if you won't go. Mm, there's stuff to you the can't restaurant do in public that you wish you could do in public. Oh, as a compliment to the chef, <laughs> like. I'll give my compliments to the chef. Lick. Oh, but yeah. you know what I'm saying. Also, there are things. What are the there, is, what, is what other ones? It's fine comparable. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> there are plenty of things that are like, it's not, it's, it's considered rude for a woman to breestfeed or for a person to breastfeed in public. It's considered rude. That's bullshit. People should be able to I breastfeed their kids in public. I do not think plate licking is in the, for a lot of I'm reasons. Not, yeah, I'm not yeah. putting I'm not, those. I'm, saying. I'm not, but I'm, you I know you're I'm not. Saying. I'm, tra- I'm lines, trying to find there are equivalents. Tr- uh, you right. know, uh, th- this is not, there are things that are not equivalent. I'm not saying these are equivalent things, but we know that social mores also include a lot of excluded behavior along puritanical sure. and regressive okay. reactionary lines. I'm not saying this is that, but I but we have to concede that there are things that are considered Sh- rude sure. that are fucked up that they're considered Look, rude. Look, sometimes when I eat too much of extremely spicy food, I should just yes. be allowed to oh. unbutton my pants uh, okay. and take my shirt off. And just for a few <laughs> okay, minutes. Wait, 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 let's, <laughs> let's keep it in the dining room. I am. It used to be rude to use the wrong, the wrong fork <laughs> for different parts of your meal. Okay. At, a, at, a, at, a, at a dining establishment. Of any, of, of sure. any dining establishment, there's you almost, use the right piece almost of There's almost no dining establishment fork, now that does service that way, but... There's none. Why? Because people were like, fuck this. It's time for me. I'm, I'm ready to eat. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use my salad fork on my steak. You're not going to stop me. I'll just keep that, that fork. Also, maybe the economy changed and, so, and society well, and also changes. Well, places you're doing society that now. Society changes you over can, time. If, you're, if, if they're still serving tables that way, you probably have money where you can do whatever the fuck you want. Whatever the fuck I'm you want. I'm gonna lick my plate. Right, totally, yes. What's good? I'm gonna lick my plate. What's good? Yeah, exactly. You know my bank is big. Um, the, the world, the things do change. Social mores do change. The way we eat, etiquette does change. Maybe Craig from the UK is trying to. If, oh, hold, if, if in the scenarios yeah. where he's doing this, in, he's saying he's doing this, at, you know, in private or, you know, amongst like, you know, shared close people, is he cleaning his own plate? Or is yes, it it's like the big plate. lick you happens yeah. and then here you go, chef. Oh, you're saying go literally. Clean this plate. I, thought, I thought you meant is he licking <laughs> other people's on me. plates at the Did table. Did a dog write this? <laughs> mean. I don't see what's wrong saying, with this. There's a scenario. I should be able to slurp where, where, all the plates before the dishwasher is closed and they're washed. Listen. I'm making it easier. <laughs> I'm just saying there's, a, there's worlds where you're licking this as a quote, public display of affection to the chef and then handing them the plate for them to clean. I'm trying to be a public uh, defender here for Craig. You used to not be able to put your elbows on the table. You used to not be, it used to be very rude to look at your phone at the table. Now that's just nonstop. You used to, you know, not be able to, oh, here, uh, you used to, I guess the thing is I still do this. I still won't eat until my anyone else at the table's food is there. I'd feel rude about that still. But I sure. don't feel. Yeah, but I don't feel bad if someone's food gets there. They're like, "I'm starving. I'm just going to dig in," and they do it. No. So agreed. I, things change. We could live in. A, we could live in a world of plate lickers by this time next year. I don't think we I will. Think coming it, out of a pandemic, I feel like we're going to be a little more cautious about where we I, put our tongues. Ah, you know what? I take it back. We're going to be looser with where we put our tongues. Actually, I I think in a situation where you've got these uh, food items that you want to lick. 
I think maybe you need to rethink your strategy on what you're using on other parts of the plate in order to scoop that stuff up. This is where bread comes in. Bread is just, bread is the plate you can lick. Bread, the plate you can lick. (laughs) So this is, okay. This is why you need that soft, spongier bread that's really good for soaking that stuff up. Soaks it up. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So, that's that's a socially acceptable way to lick a plate is to use bread as a as tongue. As a tongue, yeah. As the, the, the bread is the medium by which your tongue can touch the plate. So I think when you go to these public restaurants, just pack some bread. <laughs> just, yeah. You know, so get just, it. That's, is that just less, just slurp hmm. up an entire plate. Sorry, I need to keep keto. <laughs> I can't use that roll. I'm not allowed when, to. Yeah. Uh-huh. God. When, when uh, uh, my wife was pregnant with our, our, our first uh, child. She was uh, just – she didn't really have a whole lot of the like, oh, I've got to eat this, like, like kind of pregnancy, like food spikes. But she wanted an avocado on everything and especially on like a like a tuna fish sandwich or a tuna melt yeah, or something like that. And w- there was a <laughs> – Sorry, huh? I was just <laughs> – <laughs> <laughs> And she would just bring an avocado with her wherever she went because frequently she could get a tuna melt, but not necessarily an avocado to go on that for whatever reason. And so she'd fling it behind the counter and be like, hey, put this on. Or is she adding it after the. No, no, she's she no, she's cutting her cutting her own avocado at the at the at the table to to add the. And one time someone asked, they were like, she's like, just pointed at the stomach and they're like, oh, okay, whatever. You guess you're allowed to do whatever you want, which is true. So totally. All right. On that note, we're going to wrap up. Again, you can go to waypointplus.com to support the work we do. Thank you. I feel like we opened, a, like, we're going to get a lot of plate licking. Yeah, we're, we, a discourse we is to about to occur. Good. On the in, email uh, account now. I'm going to open it up. Might, we might need to take that. Well, I guess we can't do this because it goes against our ethos yeah, of how we're handling, like, mm-hmm. content. I can't say to come to the after dark for uh, more pl- plate licking. Plate no, let's leave plate licking here but, and, and see what mm-hmm. happens. But I would love to get questions like this for After Dark. I would love to have the style of debate about yeah, if you, manners. Yeah, if you're there, in general, but like a little more, a little more embarrassed, uh, come to the After Dark. Or less embarrassed. I want, <laughs> I want shamelessness. The vibe is different After Dark. We're here. The vibes aren't off. The vibes are on. <laughs> People always talk about all oh, these vibes are off. Nah, that's that's the vibes are vibing. They're, they're, they're on after dark. Waypointplus.com, twitter.com slash waypoint, waypoint.vice.com to read everything. Uh, what's up on the site this week? What are we, what are we, what are we promoting? I guess E3 this weekend. Friday, uh, yeah, Saturday, I, Sunday. I'll have a, a formal Ratchet and Clank review up uh, by the time this goes up. Probably timed pretty close to whenever this goes up. Uh, I had a big feature go up as we're recording this about how like indie games are awkwardly trying to leverage TikTok as a way to get exposed to like larger oh, audiences. Um, huh. um, just cause you have a lot of people in places like TikTok that are not necessarily right. Sure. In other places um, or, or there, it's just TikTok as a platform is like supercharged to like direct action elsewhere because of the collaborative nature. And so you have a lot of developers realizing, Oh, like there's one a studio in particular where um, with their previous game, spent a lot of time trying to build an audience on Twitter, and it was just like a wet, like didn't do anything yeah. to help them. Didn't it wasn't exactly why their game was a failure, but it didn't help. And they're 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 up they're, the game they're in development on and in early access. They like didn't like do any research. Just like just opened a TikTok and just like held the camera in front of their like uh, computer monitor and explained their game and. You know, it resulted in like, you know, like a 60 people going their discord, a bunch of wish lists. You know, it's not like it rags to riches, but mm-hmm. it was, you know, like the kind of direct action that you don't get necessarily. It's harder to get traction. TikTok is built for traction or for, for anonymous people to become big in a way that YouTube, Twitter, other places are not. And those are places where you have a big platform and you spit it out, you know, to to, to folks that don't um, below you. And so anyway, so, yeah, video games have a new way to find an audience. TikTok is a is a feature. I've got up on on the site now. Yeah. Okay. We'll check that out. Uh, like I said, we'll be back this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Twitch.tv slash. We don't have a, We don't have a direct time yet, right? We'll do it R- roughly morning on on Fridays when we're kicking off, right? Yeah. I want to say 10 a.m., but no, I don't know that we've little, committed to 10 a.m. Leave a little slack for leave a little wiggle. A final ironing out of setup things. Uh, but something like that. Like the idea is, we will on Friday morning 
we'll have some coffee, we'll record a podcast, we'll talk about the stuff that happened on Thursday. Right. And so, you know, that, that, and, and I'll, have I'll a, just say again outright, I'm going to be on Next Lander's thing on Thursday. So go check that out too. Uh, we are doing an agreement though, which is important. Mm-hmm. Patrick is making me promise that if I see the first yes. shreds of an Elden Ring trailer on Thursday, I have to look away. There, there are hints that it may happen. That is not me. I have no, I have no Patrick personal Klepik inside reports. knowledge. No, yeah. get out of here. Uh-huh. I do not feel good about Elden Ring today. Uh, uh, I have no information on, on Elden Ring, uh, but if, if there are tea leaves that like insiders 400 pages deep on a reset era thread yeah. and, and others who have indicated that it could be coming. And also Keely specifically has said like a couple of the reveals are going to be like long awaited games wink. you've wanted to see. And like, wink, there's wink, only wink. a couple of games that fit that fucking profile right. and like Elden Ring. Right. And, is, and is one, one of them, them is a Nintendo so, game and they're not going to Keely didn't get Breath of the Wild to for the no, kickoff. No. So no, no, they're going to save that for their own own thing. So yes, uh, he will have to look away. And then I had proposed, we'll see if we do. I, I wanted to watch like all of the souls trailers from the beginning to end. That sounds like we'll a good idea with, yeah. uh, with Elden Ring um, for, for some sort of segment. So yeah. So I need the audience to, don't Keep send Austin me honest, like, anything. You know, I'll, I'll be look. in the air. I will quite literally be at the airport probably when this is happening. Yeah. So my eyes will be. Uh, it's just, this pure. is a, a gentleman's agreement, Patrick. We both we're, mm-hmm. we both commit to this. I pledge to you. Thank you. That I will not look at the El- if there is an Elden Ring trailer. <laughs> I will not look at it until we're together in front of a camera with some microphones. All right. uh, that all kicks off twitch.tv slash waypoint on Friday. We will have guests. We will have a good time. Uh, we will have people from Motherboard coming through. I believe we are due to see some some war zone bickering between some of the Motherboard folks. Uh, I hope we get to see some Sims stuff. We'll see. We'll see what, what's what's in the air come Friday. Um, so so that's the other thing. It's like there's a lot of E3, but there's also there's more E3 than we thought, but there's still not E3 levels of E3. So we suspect there will be time to do to goof off, play some games, figure out some some stuff on the side. So look forward to that. Um, until then, you can find me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Austin underscore Walker. Where can people find you, Rob? At Rob Zachney. Patrick. At Patrick Klepik. Shout out as always to Bowen for letting us use the track Miss You off the EP Pale Machine. Find out more about they that. They lost their Patreon right as we're doing this. Did they? Shout outs to them. So yeah, shout outs to Next Lander. Let's at Next Lander go. on Twitter uh, at Next Lander. Hell on Patreon. yes. Uh, Absolutely. Like we, we hit our ambitious excellent goals yes. thank you yes. pay it forward for doing that but like yeah go those you know the, although we want their thing to succeed as well so go you know go go some I'm, I'm gonna be subbing as soon as we get off this call so. yeah same 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 very excited about this been been let me tell you i was in some of those naming conversations and it was extremely funny and their branding that they came up with here finally with next lander is incredible i'm very excited to hear their initial conversations around this and and, and hear what they all plan to do uh, those dudes have my whole heart, obviously. And and again, like just to be clear, you know, I still also love everyone who's who's at Giant Bomb still. I want everyone uh, who has helped, you know, shepherd me and mentor me to have to have uh, success. Uh, this, this it's is, just cool to see new things. It's cool it was to see the same new way things. I was excited for you know you know uh, Giant Bomb East being a, yes, you totally know, a pseudo yes. reboot of yes. of the structure of Giant Bomb. Like this is just an extension of that, and so I'm just excited to see what what goofiness they they get up to absolutely so. absolutely uh shout out to them uh all right on that note that's gonna do it for us uh again bowen waypoint.zone slash b-o-e-n see y'all this weekend until then also i guess will things will that l noir go up before that or is kato still in this i guess kato still indisposed so look for look for that feed to start filling up post e3 or you know around then uh uh, uh so just just so you know that's why you know one thing at a time we'll, we'll take it one thing at a time um until then fuck capitalism go home peace